It was one of several rain delays across the country in college football here in Oxford, Ohio. Rain and thunder and lightning for a period of two and a half hours. That was earlier today, but now time for college football. The weather is cleared. It's the dinner time start and the rematch between Marshall and Miami. Greetings, Jim Barber and the former Ohio State star Bobby Carpenter. Well, you're the two head coaches of this game, Doc Holliday and Chuck Martin, and you've got to tell your team, hold it off a minute. We're not going to play for a while in this opener. You've been down in those locker rooms. What's that like? It's not going to be a very easy situation, especially if you're Doc Holliday. You're on the road. It's starting the season. You like to have your routine. They're going to be in a tight locker room. They don't have all the amenities you would have at home. Chuck Martin obviously doesn't like it as well, but he's got a beautiful indoor facility behind us. They've got the snacks. They have the big training room, the ability to keep their guys loose and ready to go during this two-and-a-half-hour delay. Doc has chosen the redshirt freshman quarterback, Isaiah Green, and he's got a great target in Tyree Brady. And it's going to be big for Isaiah Green, the redshirt freshman getting his first start out here. They've got a new offense they were installing, kept a lot of the terminology the same. But if you look at Tyree Brady, the transfer from the University of Miami, a big play receiver, almost 1,000 yards receiving a couple years ago, he's going to be the guy that they're going to need to get going. Meanwhile, for Miami, the veteran quarterback is Gus Ragland. Seems like he's been here 100 years, and of course the opposition says best thing about him is his savviness. Gus Ragland can do it all. He can create from the pocket, he can move around, he can get it going on designed runs. He was the guy that salvaged this Red Hawk season from 0-6 to 6-0 a couple of seasons ago, 5-7 last year. Now he's looking to catapult the Red Hawks to the top of the MAC East. Bobby, this game could be as entertaining as the one last year in which there were two returns for touchdowns and a pick six. Marshall won the game. Miami thought it deserved a win. The rematch is coming up. Sunshine has engulfed Yeager Stadium for this 6.04 Eastern time start. Ready for college football. Doc Holliday, John Doc Holliday, the head coach of Marshall year number nine. He was telling us during the week, Bobby, that uh, he and Brian Kelly are two of the last uh, last survivors of guys approaching their tenure uh, of this length. So it's interesting that you know, when you're coming out, I guess you always look at guys in your recruiting class or draft class, you got to follow them and see how everything's going. And you know, when you look at this, I guess Doc looked, he said, hey, Brian Keller are the only ones that still have the same jobs that we came into yeah. <laughs> nine seasons ago. So he's been doing a great job at Marshall. Peaked with Raheem Cato a couple seasons ago. They had Chase Litton had a little bit of a down year, four and eight. Bounced back last season to eight and four. Now they're really looking to make some noise here in Conference USA. And on this opening kickoff, Marshall has to be very aware of Keon Davis, number 24. And Keon is electric. Three career touchdown returns. He starts fast. This is something they worked on a lot. Last year, Miami was gashed by the Marshall kickoff return. That was the difference in the game. Look for the Red Hawks to really get that taken care of. And I know Chuck Martin wants to get it done right. This is Sam Sloman kicking off. To the end zone, about three yards deep. That'll prevent any type of return. And so, by NCAA rules established a few years ago, Marshall and their rookie quarterback, Isaiah Green on offense from the 25. And the coordinator, Tim Cramsey, in his first year at Marshall says the thing he likes about this kid is he makes mistakes, but the next time around in a session, he corrects them immediately. Well, and he has that it factor, the thing yep. that they're looking for, that he can make plays out of the pocket. He'll hang in there. He's not just an athlete that's going to run around. He's a lot different than Chase Litton, who would just hang in the pocket more last season. But Isaiah Green, he's going to have a, a trio of wide receivers who are very talented to be able to help him out, especially, especially Tyree Brady. And he's got Davis in the backfield, so they can use him a lot as well. This is Davis straight ahead into that Miami pile for a pickup of a yard. Four-man front for the Miami defense. The offensive line is experienced for Marshall. A lot of these kids played as freshmen, and they do not allow many sacks. In fact, neither team does a bad job of protecting its quarterback, Bobby. Oh, really anchored by Levi Brown there in the middle. Preseason All-Conference USA, very talented guy, and he's the linchpin that they're going to be leaning on. Second and nine, Green's first pass ever 
shooting it way downfield. Penalty flag on the play. And the receiver may have got hung up at the 50. That being Tyree Brady, and there could be pass interference, but we'll wait officially to find out. And no surprise there going to Tyree Brady right off the jump, challenging that Red Hawk secondary right down the middle of the field. This is the Mid-American Conference officiating crew headed by Ron Hudson. Holding, defense, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Chris LeMang is the center judge, Tony Smith, the umpire, the headlinesman, Sergio De Hoyas. Line judge Michael Sharp and a look at the penalty moments ago as Marshall is going to challenge vertically the Cincinnati defense. Michael Sharp's the line judge. Pat Dolphin, the field judge, the side judge is Ryan Gannon. Back judge Justin Stair. Replay official is Harold Dynas. On the outside, that's Davis running against this Miami defense. He had over 800 yards last year. So did Tyler King. So they've got a good running tandem, and they get Brady set up. They do, and they, they have so far, that's going to help the running game. You know, they're looking to stay more committed to the run this year. When Tim Cramsey was brought in, that's one thing that Chuck Martin noticed is, hey, they had a good running attack last season. They got away from it at times. I think they want to be much more committed and dedicated to the run. So after the deep shot, you saw him taking it back on the ground. And from the 46, tough pass into coverage is caught for a pickup of eight, close to nine yards. So we've seen the rookie quarterback in action so far. Any impressions? He looks good. I like taking a shot, getting it started early on, trying to make the big play because, you know, worst case, it's probably incomplete. You get the penalty there. And then now you're just working some quick game on the outside. Develop that rhythm. Get him in a nice second and, and uh, short situation here to be able to pick up a first. Red Hawks third best defensively last year in the conference, allowing 24 points. Now it's a quarterback keep design play. Green's got the first down and down. To the 35 yard line, a pickup and 10, and immediately Marshall's offense is in gear. And that's something that you're going to see there with Isaiah Green. He's pretty big, 6'2, 200 pounds. You know, they, they overload the defense to the field with the three wide receivers, run the counter back behind that big offensive line, and pick up 10 yards. Balance set here for Marshall. I wouldn't be surprised to see him take a shot right here. This is where most offenses like to try to take a shot at the end zone. As a result, Red Hawks came with a blitz, and they forced Isaiah Green to get rid of the ball rather quickly. Well, they've got the quick game going on the outside. It's a field throw, a little bit tougher there for Isaiah Green. He's still in a pretty good situation here, sitting in second and 10. They've got electric receivers, so they're going to want to try to push the ball still down the field and probably try to get a cheap score instead of getting him into the red zone where defenses get a lot tougher. Miami with a four-man front right now. Let's see if they send an extra linebacker here. Showing blitz. Not coming, though. Green's got time to throw. Released. First down and maybe then some to the two yard line. We talk a lot about Brady, but he's got Xavier Gaines as one of the tight ends he can find. So Xavier Gaines is hanging out there at the wing at the top of the screen. They run a little play action pass over there to him. And with that, they're gonna go in a hurry up, but they're able to get him down the seam behind that Red Hawks defense on the perimeter. Good for 33 yards, first and goal from the two to Davis. Straight ahead, Marshall touchdown. Wow, that was quick. It was quick, and that's the commitment of the run by Marshall. They were able to mix it up there, try to push the ball down the field at times, take their shots, but you saw him with the commitment to the run with Keon Davis getting behind a big physical offensive line, and you can see him here. Just a zone scheme downhill, Keon Davis getting behind his pads and bowling in from about four yards out. Big question mark this year for Marshall, among other things, as you take a look at Davis, who had the six scores last year as the extra points and field goals. Justin Rohrwasser, Signed as a JC player in December 2017. That was last winter. And also kicked for URI in Rhode Island. Rookie quarterback? What rookie quarterback? This guy looks polished. And it's a 7 0 start off a 75 yard scoring drive. Yeah. Lots of green in the stadium this afternoon and this evening from Marshall. And Huntington, West Virginia, eight play, 75 yard drive. And Bobby, the biggest play was to a kid, kid from, from, get, get this, this. Frostproof, Frostproof Florida. Florida.
Absolutely, and you see the play action right there to Keon Davis. Xavier Gaines sneaking up right there, putting the linebacker in a difficult situation to choose between the run and the pass. Nice play call by Tim Cramsey. When you have the run going, you're able to set up some of the play action like that against those linebackers and safeties. Rowasser will kick off. Maurice Thomas deep and over his head, so this drive will start like Marshall's did. From the Miami 25, get a chance to see Gus Ragland who has done so well in a number of pressure situations and was 23 of 44 for 298 and two scores in the game last year in Huntington. And so what you're going to see here with Miami, they, they run an offense a little bit different. They're going to come out in what looks like a lot of three wide receiver personnel groupings with have one tight end, a back, but sometimes it'll only be two wide receivers in that third guy. Maybe he's a tight end, maybe he's a running back, maybe a receiver, and that allows them to be multiple on offense to give the defense some problems, just as you see this unique formation right here. And a penalty flag to go along with that. Kenny Young in the backfield, along with Ragland. Full start, offense, number 54, five yard penalty, first down. A referee, Ron Hudson, moving this play back five yards. And that is Tommy Doyle, the right tackle, the sophomore out of Adena, Minnesota. He was out all of last season with an injury, but I know Chuck Martin was upset. They had that pretty unique formation. Three guys detached at the bottom, trying to get a little swing pass going there and hoping to get some leverage on the defense. Alonzo Smith now in the backfield for quarterback Ragland. Miami down, 7-0 early first quarter. Think about the Red Hawks last year and the 5-7 and seven record you mentioned. Number of games that Chuck Martin's team should have won and in fact were in position to win. And they seem to lose games at the end in most unusual ways. Yeah, they didn't do a great job last year. As we take a look at Miami's offensive line right here, we've got a veteran group all returning. A lot of redshirt juniors and seniors, big physical guys, unable to handle number 91, Ryan B. right there, causing some penetration on that last play. Yeah, Ryan B. is one of the best. He's got a chance to play at the next level. The swing out to Young, who breaks the tackle. Moves the football up to the 30. It'll leave him with a third and manageable situation. And, that, and a gain of nine. And that's what Chuck Martin loves out of these running backs. They're versatile guys, able to catch the ball. Kenny Young on the Doak uh, Walker watch list. And you see right there, he's a guy that's very versatile, catch the ball, make some guys miss, and pick up some yards. And on the backs of receivers, James Gardner is a lot of fun to watch. He can go get it. Well, three years started, they're going to move him around, try to be creative. Here he is, I believe, at the bottom of the screen. Let's see what he can get done. Marshall fans making some noise, hoping the defense can make a stop. Faking to Young, Raglan, little rollout's got a man. That is enough for the first down. And that is one of the very unique sets that you're going to see right there in the personnel groupings. Able to run a little screen, but they had two running backs in. Fake it to Kenny Young, and then they're able to get Alonzo Smith sneaking back under, catching out of the backfield, pick up the first down and keep the chains moving. Smith gets seven. Football now at the 37 of the Red Hawks. Pure sunshine and now on the field and in the stadium after a lengthy delay this afternoon. Straight drop for Raglan. Over the middle. Nearly picked. He's looking for Andrew Homer right there. He had Homer in the scene. Talented athlete. And these are these versatile guys. Him and Nate Becker, number 44, the two tight ends. They like to mix, go with 12 personnel, two tight ends on the field. You see Gus Raglan hanging the pocket, delivered a bullet just a little bit behind him. And uh, I believe that was Chase Hancock in there getting in on the play, who's the preseason all-conference linebacker for Marshall, who's been a mainstay for a couple of years. Yeah, fifth-year senior on it, Daniels, West Virginia. Former walk-on. Again, a man in motion. Running off tackle here, not much available. Depends on the spot, maybe a couple of yards. Third and long, and this Marshall defense is out making some Action right now, especially with Hancock. Hancock's flying around making plays. Chuck Martin staying with the run right here. A little jet sweep trying to get downhill, but you see Hancock shedding blocks, getting in there, making plays, being very aggressive. Big third and eight right here. They can pick this up, keep the drive moving for Raglan. Look for him to use his legs to make something happen. This linebacking crew had 246 combined tackles last year for Marshall. They're coming with pressure. Raglan picks it up and one hops it. And Miami will have to give up the ball. They're looking for Jack Sorensen up there at the top of the screen, and 
This is one thing Marshall has, great defensive backs, guys that are able to, to lock them up. That's Jalen McLean Sapp up there. You see him getting excited. He's fired up. They're trying to ISO him on third down. No dice. Said the thing that's most impressive when you talk to Chuck Martin about Marshall is its speed. Marshall always has athletes on the back end, both you know, on the perimeter, wide receivers, running backs, DBs, linebackers. They do a great job going into Florida, bringing in guys who transfer out of other schools that are very talented, and you're seeing that here today. Kyle Kramer punted 64 times last year. Tyler King to one knee at the 20. Seventy-five yard scoring drive capped by a two yard run difference of the game seven nothing Marshall Bobby Carpenter Jim Barber let's go back to Marshall's opening drive and this is a big play right here to Xavier Gaines you're focusing on Tyree Brady but here comes Gaines here comes here comes Gaines with a little play action there and then you see Keon Davis just putting his head down from two yards out pounding it in for the only touchdown thus far of the game and coming out of the break there, you heard Miami honoring Bill Mallory, the legendary coach from here, Colorado, Indiana, two-time Big Ten Coach of the Year, somehow not in the College Football Hall of Fame. I'm a little partial to him. He coached my dad here for the Red Hawks. And uh, one heck of a turnaround artist to go into some programs and really, really make him special. Well said. We'll see his son, Kurt, and in Indiana State next week against Louisville on a run on first down of five yards. It's going to be a steady diet of Davis and Tyler King, number three. Again, they combined for over 1,600 yards rushing last year. There is some history between these two teams. Miami leads it rather in command, but the last 10 games that belong to Marshall, and last year's game flipped on a dime because of Marshall's special teams. Well, last year Miami dominated the game up and down the field, scoring touchdowns three or four times in the red zone, almost 50% on third down and had the ball for 35 minutes and somehow came out with a loss. I know Chuck Martin wanted to rip his hair out. This is a series, yeah, it's been long in the making, long time running, and Marshall has dominated it lately, and the Red Hawks are looking to turn this thing around here this afternoon. Didn't you see Chuck Martin the next week after they lost to Marshall? We had him right here, and listen, he was beside himself. He had a bunch of freshmen on special teams, ripped all those guys off, put his starters back out there, and said, we're not having that happen again. No more return touchdowns against us. Green, a little safety valve pass to Obi. Obi Lo, Obi Lo, and he is a guy that can stretch the field. You see that right there? It's a nice little stand up and throw to Obi Alalo, and it's a great job by him right there to be able to catch the ball, turn, get out of bounds, and uh, just move the change. You're putting in your quarterback, your young guy. Let's remember Isaiah Green, redshirt sophomore. Give him manageable third downs. They're sending it to second and four. You've got the whole wealth of your playbook here to be able to choose from. Obi Allo had last year 19 catches for 238 yards. Marshall averaged eight yards a carry in first down, and now they're going to go to the bag of tricks. And on that play, Tyler King carries the football up close to midfield. And another unique formation set. If you look at this, the two running back set again. I believe is that Anthony Anderson in there up at the top, tossing it to Tyler King. Anthony Anderson's a little more of a power back out there on the lead blocking. Not something we see a lot in college football now. Two running backs on the field at the same time. Both Miami and Marshall utilize that personnel group. Makes it a little bit tougher on the linebackers and safeties to pick it up. On that play, Bobby, a carry of 12. King last year, fourth in the country in rushing yards for a freshman. So far, Marshall has dominated the line of scrimmage with this veteran group that doesn't give up many sacks. And a young quarterback getting his first start who has been, in a word, impressive. He's been very impressive. And I'm, I'm starting to look at this Miami defense here that was so good a season ago, doing a great job, one of the tops in the MAC in a lot of categories. And they've got a couple veteran linebackers, three-year starters in Junior McMullen, Brad Kennick. Very talented guys, and they're getting run up and down the field. It's going to be up to them to get a stop here and get this Red Hawk defense in the sideline. On second and seven, here's Green. He's got pressure, gets rid of it in double coverage. Contact, penalty flag at the last minute. And that's going to be pass interference again against Miami. You know, two officials staring at that. You know, Chuck Martin's kind of shaking his head. Pass interference, number 15, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. It's on the cornerback, DeAndre Daniels. 
He's a third, three year starter, but he's got the tough task right there. I, I believe going against Tyree Brady, who has speed. He's got the size 6'3, 206. The Hurricane transfer. And they're going to take shots with him because even if you don't get completions, you're picking up 15 yards on a penalty. King picks up eight. You know, it's interesting you mentioned Brady. He has already drawn 30 yards in pass interference penalties. And so he's not going to have the completions, but that allows them to lighten the box. And you see right here where they, they're able to get the running game going a little bit. Cody Mitchell, the big tight end, pulling around, leading up there for Tyler King, who you know, both King and Keon Davis are having a heck of a day on the ground, really being able to pound the football against you know, what many people thought was a pretty good Red Hawk defense. Yes. Marshall already in field goal range, leading Miami 7 0. A lot of options on second and short. Why not? Got a man. And just over the outstretched hands of Tyree Brady, fifth year senior out of Homestead, Florida. I'll tell you this, Isaiah Green, he's no idiot. No. He, he's looking at his best guy out there. He sees single coverage. We're in the strike zone right around here at the 25 yard line. It's a second and two. We're going to take a shot, see if we can steal a quick one. We've been running the ball well. Hopefully we'll pick it up here on third down. This is going to be a big opportunity here. You see the Red Hawks uh, subbing in some of their big run-stopping personnel to try to be able to take care of this uh, Marshall Thundering Herd offense. And Trace being packaged right now on a run play, and they get the first down. They needed two. The Herd gets four. On the carry by Anthony Anderson, considered to be the big back on this team, and likely the third down back. Yeah, he's more of the power guy that they talked about. He's not going to be in there on a lot of normal downs, first, second, third down, but they get into third and short. That's when they're going to allow him to come in, use that big frame, 240 pounds, fifth-year senior downhill. That's a load for any linebacker. Yeah. Three by one, receiver set. Marshall on the move again. Just outside the red zone. Now Green with a look to the sideline. Still 10 on the play clock. Now five. He's going to keep it. And he gets four on the play to the 16. Take Isaiah Green got the start prior to today's game, at least officially listed as the starter, and so far is not disappointed. Well, they had a tough battle in camp between him and Alex Thompson. Alex Thompson a little bit more of the pocket pass, although he has some athleticism. The one thing Isaiah Green is going to have to watch when he pull it down inside, this Red Hawk defense flies around, and you saw him there take, some, take a nice shot at the end of that play. If you get too many of those, you may be standing on the sideline. Yeah. This drive started on a 20. Previous one on a 25. You see right here what they're doing is they're trying to count the guys in the box. How many safeties do they see deep? How about this overhang player at the bottom of the screen? Do they think he's a pass or a run guy? Green makes a couple of guys miss, and look at him go. Well, this is the reason that Doc Holliday chose him as the starting quarterback today. One of those reasons, anyway. Well, we talked to Tim Cramps earlier when they are talking about this. He said Green just has the it factor. And Miami's bringing pressure. You see Junior McMullen push him, push him in the pocket, flush him out. But I see Green able to pull it down, find some open space, try to get to the sideline. Hopefully in a year or two, he'll be able to get out of bounds before taking that shot. Another first down. First and goal now from the Miami nine. Green has three carries for 22 yards. On the rollout has a man out in the backfield. And close to the end zone. On the flare to Obi Oliallo. And a great job there by Obi Oliallo. Turning the corner, stretching the ball, almost getting in. And this is one thing that Cramsey has to, is able to do. We have an athletic quarterback like Isaiah Green move the pocket, get him outside. And when you're a team like Miami playing a little more single high, one safety deep, they're trying to move those guys back and forth on the motion. It's a great call by the herd to be able to, to get, catch them in the middle of a shift. Officials timeout with second and goal with 345 remaining opening quarter. The ruling on the field is that the runner was out of bounds prior to reaching the goal line. That play is under further review. Harold Dynas, again, our replay official. The communicator is Steve Barnes. We're going to take a look at this. Oh, and it's a, hey, 
First review. Didn't even get out of the first quarter. How excited are you about that, Jim? <laughs> I know that that's something you're passionate about is college football replay. So take a look at this. See if he probably got one foot in. Well, we've already sat through a two and a half hour rain delay, so. Uh... It looked like his foot went out there and slid. Now, I don't know if he was able to reach, but you can see one thing that's nice about the field turf, especially on the white, is you can see him sneaking out. There's a little black line that comes up right there about the four where his foot went. Where the ball was at that point will now be the question. Well, the, the book on Obi Alo, the receiver number seven, is he can stretch the field. He can also stretch out. It's a great lean there. I don't think they're going to give it to him. They ruled him out, I think, about the two-yard line, one-yard line. That looks like it's probably going to stand. Twelfth play of the drive coming up. This has been domination by Marshall in the first quarter. It is. This is a great job. Already under four minutes. And this is what happens when you put together these long, sustained drives. And you have to think about this Miami defense. They've been on the field 12 straight plays, not giving up anything big, but just getting bled, getting to third down and not being to get able to get off the field. That's one thing they're going to have to try to solve on the sideline uh, with John Hauser and Spencer Nowinski, the two defensive After coordinators. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Second down. You saw the new replay equipment that the Mid-American Conference is using. Costs almost a million dollars, and John Steinbrecher, the commissioner, is telling us prior to the game that uh, kind of ahead of the game in terms of other conferences using it, and they think that this cuts down on the amount of time in which a decision can be made by you bringing the official on either side with this type of equipment to the play and then getting the booth to either confirm or change the call. So that's the information that you were squeezing out of him here during that re during the delay? Among other things. <laughs> yes, good to talk to him. Saw it at Ball State the other night, Bobby. He's been everywhere this week on week one. Yeah, that was the shortest replay that I've been a part of. Yeah, it's good, right? You see the full house backfield here for the herd shifting over. The pile pushing forward. Touchdown. Anthony Anderson didn't get a score last year. He's got one to start 2018. It's a great job right there. Miami held the point, but Anthony Anderson too much. You see him get downhill here. Good job by Miami. The problem is on the on short yardage situations, either at the goal line or in the field, if you're not pushing back the line of scrimmage and you're going against a big, powerful back like Anthony Anderson, you're going to have a hard time bringing him down for no game. Oh, this is the best part right here. First game of the season. You see the herd running in a guy. People don't have their substitutions down. Missing a wing. Don't call the timeout. Just take the nope. delay of game. It's only going to add five yards to the PAT. It's okay. Which is still shorter than an NFL extra point. Yeah. Looks like the officials helped him out there and held the clock. Yeah. Justin Warwasser will kick as the clock now starts to wind down. Last year, Marshall never trailed, but the game was close. This game, at least in the first quarter, is not. Great start for the Marshall offense. 14-0, heard. Bobby asked Marshall quarterback Doc Holliday during the week during a conference call, you surprised you made it to nine seasons? And he said, I was surprised after year two I was still coaching. <laughs> He's done pretty well, though. Well, 5-0 and in bowl games and Marshall doesn't hurt. You see that people want to see they want conference titles and they want to see postseason success. Whenever you end the season on a win, it feels a lot better and you're able to take that momentum into the spring and into recruiting. 16 was a much down year with the herd. 17 got it back and 18 could be pretty good. A lot of veterans in a great deal of positions for the thundering herd. Already with a two touchdown lead. And once again, no return for the Red Hawks. So you're down 14 nothing. Got to get this offense clicking. How does it uh, how does it happen? Well, you look at Gus Ragland to start making some plays. Early last season they had him involved in a lot of designed runs. He got injured, he came back. They chose not to run him as much just cuz he was beat up and you know he was their prize guy. They wanted to make sure he was out there, but they haven't really ran him a whole lot today. He's a big physical guy. He's 218 pounds. I'm looking for them to get him going a little bit and see if he can make this offense move with his legs. Jalen Bester now in the backfield next to Raglan. 20 plays by the Marshall offense, just six for Miami. Here comes pressure, they pick it up. Got a man over the middle and a strike for 15 yards. 
That's a good start to this drive and much needed to the big James Gardner, who had eight catches for 111 against Marshall last year. And that's big. He is the Miami equivalent to Tyree Brady. Gus Ragland's looking for him the entire way. They want to try to get him to the middle of the field, get him on a linebacker, get him on safety. It'll pitch out that doesn't work very well. Because of the good bounce, Bester is able to get control and go out of bounds for a loss on the play. Bester's a little smaller than Kenny Young, more the speed guy, only 182 pounds, trying to get him on the perimeter right there and make some plays. He had some modest carries last year, Bobby, 20 for 111. But in this play, didn't have much of a chance. Loss of five. Marshall so far, all positive plays. Miami's had a couple of negative ones. Tyler B, Hames, and Couch up front defensively. And Raglan on the keep. Nothing there. You know, that's a design play, and Marshall was waiting for it. They were, and that was Malik Grant, the veteran safety. He's one of the best tacklers they're going to have. They move him around a lot. He goes out and makes some plays. Defensive line did a good job holding the point, but Malik Gant was not about to let Gus Raglan get, get out of his grasp and start letting this Red Hawk offense move. Third and 15, under two and a half of the first quarter. Many of these Miami fans likely very surprised. So two safeties deep over here. Probably get some extra attention at the bottom of the screen to Gardner. Need to get the football to midfield. Ragland in trouble. He's got to get rid of it. Not only is Marshall's offense in high gear, so is its defense. Juwan Young, though, the fifth-year senior, number four from defensive end out of Miami, applying some of that pressure right there to Gus Ragland and this Miami offensive line, which are very good, very gifted, talented guys, have not been able to give Gus Ragland the time he needs or open up the holes for Kenny Young and company. So Tyler King back to return another punt potentially for Marshall. High snap, kick away, punter goes down, no flag. And the catch is at the 30, actually 25 and good gunner play by Cincinnati, or by Miami. And let's take a look at what happened last year when Miami elected to kick to Keon Davis, not once, but twice. Two returns of 99 and 97 yards. And if you look at him there, he's not even really getting touched. It's one thing if you see guys getting there and miss tackles. Those are physical errors. The guy's getting outside of their lanes, not holding the point. Another time, one move on the kicker and he's gone. You see the great pursuit, but that's what cost the Red Hawks the game last year. They did. They dominated them every other way. Chuck Martin thinking they could come in this year and do a lot of the same things and have not been able to get it going thus far. Difference of 140 yards in favor of Miami, yet it loses the game by less than a touchdown. Back to Isaiah Green, redshirt freshman starting quarterback in an offense that's been averaging Eight yards a carrier better, and that's Keon Davis, who nearly broke one in the secondary. And if you see the push that this herd offensive line is getting up front, they've got these guys on skates, and there's some big dudes up there. Nate Trawick, the 5'11", 316-pound senior out of Richmond, Indiana. He's a beefy guy in the middle. He's one of their leaders physically and emotionally, and these guys are getting packed off the ball right now. Well, at the right tackle spot, you have Tariq Adams, who's 307. Homer mentioned 299. Jordan Dowry making his 37th career start. He's no a small man at 292. And right now they're just blowing Miami off the ball. And that's something that didn't happen last season. This Red Hawk defense was very good up front. Doug Costin, another guy, played defensive end last year. They slid him in. He had an opportunity right there to make the play on Keon Davis and just slid off. They've got to start wrapping up and getting the backs to the ground. Just about a minute remaining in the first quarter. Green to roll out and look. Got a man. 45 yard line after the catch a run of 10. They're doing anything they want out there and the catch by number nine Marcel Williams and they said they would move their weapons around and oh has coordinator Tim Cramsey done that. See him with a little sickle pull right there with Jordan Dowry to give Isaiah Green some protection and then he's able to find Marcel Williams and this is what happens when you're able to establish the run. It's the quarterback's best friend some of this play action get him moving the pocket and finding guys down the field. Yes, good point. Pick up a 21. New coordinator this year is Tim Cramsey. From among other places, Sam Houston State last year. Sam Houston, number one in the country in the FCS in points. Almost 44 a game, 538 yards a game. That was number one as well. 
365 first downs of Bobby, 7,500 total yards for the year. Well, and one of the things that they wanted to do as we're seeing the expiration of the first quarter here is they wanted a more balanced offense. And Tim Cramsey has been giving them that in this first quarter. And in this first quarter for Marshall, a scoring drive of 75, capped by a two-yard run by Keon Davis. And then after that, an 80-yard scoring drive. Once again, on a short running play. Anderson with a score. This great fan support hardly dampened by the changes in starting times. We're still supposed to get started at 3.30 Eastern. And then it became 5.30 due to weather. Then 6 o'clock, teams are out practicing at 5. And everybody that came in from Huntington and most of the folks from Miami have stayed around to watch college football nighttime style. Jim Barber, Bobby Carpenter, start of the second quarter. Marshall has dominated play with its passing and running game and right now leading 14-0 behind redshirt freshman quarterback Isaiah Green. Isaiah Green, six yards shy of 100, and right now the herd with 83 rushing yards as well, really dominating this game offensively. Green is seven for 10 in the air, shooting for Brady to the end zone incomplete. He's already drawn a two pass interference penalties on Miami. Not this time, it's pretty good defense led by DeAndre Daniels. Well, DeAndre Daniels is getting a little bit handsy. You can see him here raking and pulling a little earlier. There may even have been a jersey tug before that. The herd faithful that are down in that end zone, not happy with the lack of a flag. And you're talking about Tyree Brady, who's already drawn two penalties today. Now third and six. And timeout taken by Miami. Wise move by Chuck Martin. Out of the half, this will be a 30 second timeout. I like the time. I like the timeout right here. Be able to get your defense collected. It's a big third down play. You want to get off the field because this is not what you want to have happening again. Taking a shot, and you see Tyree Brady being able to go get that ball. It's right there, it's fairly well thrown. He's got DeAndre Daniels hanging on him. DeAndre Montgomery, the former linebacker playing safety, is coming over to help just a bit late. But they've been given all they have been can handle with Tyree Brady, and so the question is, you gotta pick your poison, Jim. Do you double up Tyree Brady? Do you let Obi Oviallo run free? Do you try to stop the run? There's so many weapons for this herd offense. There's Brady flanked out against Daniels. On a third and six for Marshall. Red Hawks showing blitz. Some movement on the line. No flag. And the pass out of bounds. And now penalty flags come in. I can't help but wonder if there might have been encroachment, but we'll see. Actually, they're pointing toward Marshall, and this penalty will likely be declined. It's a hold. have come from the left side of the line. Ron Hudson. Holding, number 55, offense. Penalty is declined, fourth down. That is uh, right guard, Alex Millett. Down here on the left. And you can see the little stunt. They were able to bring Junior McMullen. He slides free. He's stunning with, I believe, number 90, Dean Lemon, coming underneath. That's where the hole was drawn, and that's a big play here to back him up on a declining it, I guess, on it. And now Marshall electing to go on fourth and six. Miami could use a bigger play defensively here. It's a four receiver set. Three by one and the three to the right at quarterback green. I like the move though by Doc. It's no man's land. You might as well go. Instead, the uh, redshirt freshman will try a punt. And did they save it? Yes. And they found a backup punter, too. It was a great execution. I believe that was Tyree Brady, the star wide receiver. Miami pinned inside its own five and already in a two touchdown hole. Marshall head coach Doc Holliday says number eight, Tyree Brady, is the best player in this team. And you can see why. Not only is a great wide receiver, but also on special teams. Getting it done unselfish and a great execution there, the little quick kick. Isaiah Green lays it up, gets kind of a bad bounce. It's Tyree Brady flying in to pin the Red Hawks deep. I like that, a little trickery 
early in the game here to try to flip some field position. So Miami pinned up against its own goal line, already trailing by two scores. And Gus Raglan will operate from the end zone. Danger point here. They'll run, and straight ahead for three is Kenny Young, 50-year senior out of Tallahassee, Florida, who last year ran for 772 yards and six touchdowns. Critical drive right here for the Red Hawk offense. They need to at least get a couple first downs. Their defense has been on the field the entire game thus far, with the offense not being able to move. They get the stop, they get off the field. Now, Gus Ragland, you've got to give them a little reprieve, move the ball at least to flip the field to give them something to defend. Miami right now a minus one rushing the football. Raglan got him in. There's some breathing space. To the 20-yard line, call on James Gardner when you're in a fix. And that's the guy they've been looking for right there. A little play action in the backfield. You see the jet sweeps going both ways. Gus Raglan hanging in there. And this is the big play guy for the Red Hawks. James Gardner used that big body to get inside on number three, Chris Jackson right there. Best cornerback for Marshall and James Gardner winning that battle. Yeah, Jackson's the boundary corner and a three-year starter. He will draw the assignment primarily of Gardner this afternoon and this evening. Raglan out to the flat, threw that one away, intended for Gardner and again defended by Chris Jackson, who's a transfer from Florida A&M. That was probably a great throwaway there by Gus Raglan. You see James Gardner, 217 pounds, 6'4", Maxwell, Litnikoff Award uh, watch list, and you, know, you see why. Last year he had almost 1,000 yards on 47 catches, but 11 touchdowns using his size in the red zone. They're gonna need some more plays for him though in the field as well. Second and 10. So far, no rushing attack for Miami. That'll help Alonzo Smith, who picks up close to eight. It's a big play right here with Alonzo Smith. They love to run the play action across. You see him, number of her defenders right there trying to make the play. Juwan Young, one of them. Artis Johnson coming through. But Alonzo Smith just too quick to the hole, and that was a nice job. Now you put him in a third and manageable situation. Another big opportunity for the Red Hawks to convert this. Could be a run pass option for Raglan, let's see. Gives it back to Young, trying to go straight ahead. Did he get a favorable spot? He did, he gets three, and another Miami first down. So from the three yard line, impressive drive. Bill Belichick's rule is when you're backed up, you always wanted two first downs every drive, helps flip field position, give your defense a rest. The Red Hawks have been able to achieve that. They've done this running game going a little bit. Kenny Young right there with a little read option, putting his head down and bowling, bowling his way to a first down. And he'll flank Gardner out to the outside against Chris Jackson. Again, the boundary corner and a good one. Raglan looking for him and man coverage. Gardner battling for it, incomplete. Miami fans would like to see a penalty flag on that play. They'd like to see a penalty flag, and I can understand why James Gardner locked up right there with Chris Jackson, a lot of contact. But if you flip, if you flip it back over, and remember watching Tyree Reddy, you saw a very similar situation. These were big physical receivers. Not a great ball by Raglan. Puts it a little too far inside. Needs to keep it outside where only Gardner can get it. But these officials are letting him play. And as long as it's going both ways, I don't have a problem with it. Well, defenders allowed access to the ball, too. Not anymore. This is an offensive game. <laughs> you can tell Bobby Start on the defensive side with the Ohio State University. There's one into that secondary. And finally, the rushing attack non existent for a quarter has been highlighted by the play of Alonzo Smith, who gets 18 on that run. You see the jet coming across, pulling back Nate Becker, and then Alonzo Smith shooting through there. And this is something when you're able to develop a rhythm, get some first downs. Sometimes you can't always even expose what the defense's weaknesses are if you're not running enough plays. And it appears that Miami and Chuck Martin are able to get a little bit of a rhythm now and start running downhill. And 46 yards on this drive, Bobby, up to the 49. Fresh set of downs for Miami. Raglan trying to get out of pressure, does what a veteran quarterback should do, and that is 
throw it away. Well, I think Gus Ragland may have panicked a little bit there. Think so? He, he felt some perceived pressure, and whenever you start moving the pocket and sliding out, there's the offensive linemen, they're blocking where they think you're going to be, and you see him sitting here, he sees the rush, that pocket's clean. He doesn't get pressure until he slides out of there. For a fifth-year senior, I want to see him poised to calm and hang in there, but it's tough because the precedent that's been set today, he's been under siege almost the entire first half. It's going to be something they'll have to deal with to give him time, and again, it's a good offense last year in protecting the quarterback, allowing just 22 sacks the entire season. That's less than two per game. The pitch to the outside, and Young tries to make a man miss, and he is cut down after a small game. This is some of the creativity that you like to see out of this Miami offense. George Barnett likes to get some different form formations in here, get Kenny Young on the perimeter. The problem is this Marshall defense is too fast. And right there you see Jalen McClain Stapp coming up from his corner position in the field side, and being able to have a nice physical tackle, sweeping the legs and getting to the ground. McClain Sapp injured last year from time to time. Good to go this year and a very physical player, one of those corner spots. Raglan, four for 10, that was considered a pass for 44. Looking to pick up the first down and he's got Gardner. Wide open at the 40. Got more than enough in this drive that started way back at the three is moving. I like what Miami's beginning to do here. They're starting to mix it up, run, pass. You see Raglan lock in, deliver a strike. And he's going to his guy, James Gardner. Sometimes you get too cute. You try to say, hey, I'm going to go away from this guy. He's going to draw coverage. But there's a reason why guys like James Gardner and Tyree Brady are your number one receivers. They're big, they're physical, they can make plays after the catch. And he averages 19 yards per, per reception a year ago. Time to go down the field and see if he can pick up a cheap one. Faking the inside handoff, Raglan, out of pressure, throws it away. If you're just joining us, Marshall, two long scoring drives of 75 and 80 yards, capped by two small runs. Leads 14 0, and this is Miami's best offensive penetration into the Marshall defense and into the Thundering Herd territory. Well, Chuck Martin's got to be happy with the fact his offense is rolling a little bit. The drive started on their own five yard line. They've been able to drive out here across the 50. Two more first downs. You put them in a situation where you can at least have a field goal opportunity right here. And this is why it's going to be big for Gus Ragland to continue to move the ball. Give him a third and manageable after this. Straight ahead with the football and a carry to the 35. It's a pickup of three. So Miami, after the carry by Jalen Bester, faced with a third and seven. And that's a good call right there. I like it. Run the ball behind uh, Danny Golovsky, your big Remington Awards, or Remington Watch Center. Get some push. Third and seven is a heck of a lot better than a third and ten. With the 35 yard line, you've got some better options now than if you're sitting there in a third and ten situation. Maybe even worse if you would have given up a sack. It'll be a four down territory situation too, because that would, if there's a stop here, that's a very long field goal attempt. Thirteenth play of the drive. Wrangling to keep on the design play. Now fourth and two. That would be a 47 yard field goal attempt. But you're down by two touchdowns against a prolific offense. And that call right there to me indicated that this was four down territory. They're going to take a third and seven. We're going to try to make it a fourth and third or a fourth and manageable. Maybe a fourth and three, fourth and two. Surprised they missed the face mask there. It looked like they got raggling a little bit right off of the read. But run your big physical quarterback straight downhill and put them in a situation now you can pick this up. Here's a big play for Miami. Close. Marshall says not close enough. Based upon what we saw right here, I don't know if the offensive line got enough of a push. They brought in Alonzo Smith, the big 215 pound fifth year senior, but it looks to me like they might be about a half a yard short, although that's a better spot than I thought. Marshall football. Thought the gamble was worth it though. It is, it's a long field goal, probably not gonna make it. Try to pound it in there. Now it's time for the defense to take over. In the Battle of Conference USA in the MAC, CUSA leads 14 0. Moments ago, disappointment for this Miami offense, needing to pick up two yards on fourth down 
and deny it as Chase Hancock, 37, is the last man to come in and meet Alonzo Smith. You see Alonzo Smith get behind his pads. He's getting a little bit of a push, but Chase Hancock able to shed the block and finish it off and not allow him to fall forward and pick it up. That Miami dri drive, 14 plays, 66 yards, almost six minutes. While it didn't turn up points, the offense developed a rhythm, gave the defense a little bit of a rest here. Hopefully that'll pay dividends on the next drive. Let's see if Miami's defense could make some stops here. Isaiah Green on the first down, another safe pass out to Brady. And he is gang tackled past the 35. The spot will be the 36 and a pickup of seven on first down. And a good job there, Isaiah Green, seeing the free access, throwing it out there to Brady. Missed tackle by DeAndre Daniels, but fear not, Brad Kennick, the senior three-year starter out of Ann Arbor, Michigan, coming over to finish the play. Who had 102 tackles last year. Penalty flag after the short rushing play by Keon Davis. And that will be against the Thundering Herd. Again, Ron Hudson, a referee for the Mid-American Conference. Holding, number 61, offense. 10-yard penalty, second down. It's on Levi Brown. Probably their best, best offensive lineman up front. Preseason all-conference. See him up here trying to get some push. And a little tug there late. Trying to swipe, swipe the legs, I believe, of big number 96, Nate Treyway. And this is a better situation now for the Red Hawks. Now they have a second long, rested defense. Let's see if they bring a little pressure and try to make a play. Could have been a third and one for the Thundering Herd. Now second and 14. Isaiah Green stepping up, looking downfield. He's got nobody there. Little safety valve release. We'll turn that into a short gain, leaving up with a third and long, but yet Green doesn't panic out there. He seems to have a lot of control, and it's not how he's being able to find defenders, and did it nicely there. Darius Thomas back defending. Well, it was a great, great job of being patient by that Miami secondary and the linebacking group, not running up, trying to give Green a window to throw into, making him cross the line of scrimmage, and because of that now, they're able to hold off on a third and six. Play clock at seven. Brown and Greek get their signal straight now at two. Pressure to the outside, too high intended for Tyree Brady. And you mentioned the fact that Miami's defense had some time to get some rest, and I think it's starting to show a bit. It definitely showed on that on that drive right there. Three and out, you had the fourth play in there with the penalty, and that's what happens when they're able to go to the sideline, take a look at what they're doing. Now you're seeing Brad Kennick, the leader of that Red Hawk defense, saying, hey guys, we can stop them. We just need a little bit of rest. Now we'll hopefully get the ball in a better situation, hopefully do something with this punt return. Let's put the drive together and get some points. Sometimes to start the season with no preseason games, everybody thinks it's always the offense that has to settle in. In this case, I think it was this Miami defense that needed to settle in. In the meantime, Kenny Young back to return a punt from Robert Lefevre, who just has five career kicks coming into the game, and that's a good one. Inside the Miami 25. Under seven for the first half. 14-0, Marshall. Yeah, last year's game between these two teams in Huntington, Miami had 429 total yards. And Ryan Smith caught a couple of touchdown passes from Gus Ragland. Yet in this game, there was no time that Miami was actually ahead or tied, just close. And at the end, time ran out on the Red Hawks as they lost by five. Now it looks like this Red Hawk offense is getting things together. You see the defense over here on the sideline finally getting a stop, feeling a little better about themselves, getting some rest. Now it's going to be up to Gus Ragland. You saw them using the play action there to get the touchdown to Ryan Smith from last season. They've got this running game going now. James Gardner's going a little bit. They've started to open up some options for this Miami offense. Red Hawks had a 66-yard drive moments ago in 14 plays. Didn't hit any points, but did chew up six minutes on the clock. We'll start with the run on first down, and a big one. It's Kenny Young and this offensive line getting some push. Danny Godlewski, Jared Rubio, Tommy Doyle, Sam McCollum with his 35th straight start, and Jordan Rigg up front. You're starting to see that push by that Miami offensive line beginning to take effect. 
They're able to get up to the second level, get on Chase Hancock, get on Frankie Hernandez, and get a push. Now they're able to get the passing attack going right there to number 44, Nate Becker, down the seam. And now you're starting to penetrate this defense. Remember, they were just out there for six minutes on that last drive. Their offense had a three and out. Now they're experiencing what it's like to play a little bit tired. And this looks like the exact play that they scored to Ryan Smith on. The play action pitch and able to push the ball down the middle of the field to their tight end. Good for 25. And what's happening now is the point you made earlier as Johnson was hurt on the play is the fact that Miami now able to run the ball sets up the pass rather nicely. Naze Johnson, the nickel back, kind of the do it all guy for this defense. 5'10", 183 pounds out of West Virginia. They're going to have a hard time replacing him. Hopefully he'll be all right. First and 10, Red Hawks at the Marshall 40. Second time into the territory of Marshall here in the second quarter. Hawks need points, though. They're coming with a corner blitz. Ragland picks it up and nearly throws it into stands. That was a smart move right there by Ragland just to get rid of the ball. Don't put your deep, your offense in a worse situation you already had. It's first down. We'll see what this is, roughing the quarterback potentially. Malik Gant came in on the pressure. Maybe a Number 14 potential offense. of grounding actually on Ragland. Maybe a loss of down on the play. Yeah, Marshall was not happy with that. They were hoping for the hoping for the potential grounding. The problem is Gus Ragland gets the ball back to the line of scrimmage, but still in the pocket. And I think he thought James Gardner was going to be out there. He turned in and ran an in route, so no one within the the necessary distance. Good call grounding. by coordinator Adam Fuller in his first year as defensive coordinator for Marshall, sending Malik Gant on that corner blitz. First and long. Trying to get some of that yardage back. Miami's first two possessions, Bobby a minus three rushing, the last two 55 and counting. Much better, but right there you see Marquise Couch, the defensive end, coming through, penetrating, able to affect, affect the running back so that he's not able to get that head of steam going downhill. Now you're looking at a, very, a third and 15 situation. And this might be four down again. See if you can chunk this in two consecutive plays. See if you can pick up five and maybe give yourself a fourth and manageable. Have to get to the 30 to move the chains. Ragland setting up a screen to Young, 40, and to the 35. So now a decision, but probably not a difficult one. No man's land again at the 35. Brings up a fourth and five for the Red Hawks. That was a great call right there. My offensive coordinator George Barnett will give you, we'll pick up 10, give ourselves a fourth and manageable, go no huddle, see if we can get the Marshall defense off guard a little bit and keep this drive rolling. Down to five minutes for the first half. Now you're seeing a herd defense that's a little bit tired. They've been on the field now. They have to make a play. If you can pick up another first down, it'd be huge for this Red Hawks offense. Raglan faking the handoff, looking. He's got a man. Who else? Rely on big targets this time around. It's Luke Mayock. His first catch of the game. Miami one for two on fourth down. Big play. Oh, a big receiver. 6'5", 230 pounds. Redshirt junior out of Sugar Land, Texas. Working the weak boundary over there on Chris Jackson. A little pressure for Marshall right there, bringing Artis Johnson, but Raglan hangs in the pocket and throws a strike to the outside and some nice footwork by Luke Mayock. So a decision on third and 16 to get some of the yardage back, not all of it, oh, put them in position to get the five on fourth down. Now you're able to keep this drive going, be able to continue to grind on this defense. Now you're able to start running downhill again, and this is something you're setting yourself up, second six, second seven, this Miami offense beginning to impose their will. This is Chuck Martin football, don't you think? This is what Chuck Martin wanted to get done. Going three and out a couple drives in a row wasn't his idea of offensive football. This is what Miami was able to do last year. Took them a couple drives to settle in, but now they're starting to find their rhythm. Two by two receiver set. Single setback, Ragland penalty flag on the play. It's gonna go against Miami. Ball start, number 52, offense, five yard penalty, remains second down. On the left tackle, Jordan Rigg. 
just from right down the road in Spring, Springboro, Ohio. And he has his task with blocking, blocking Ty Tyler off the edge. And you can see why he might be a little antsy. Ty Tyler, very talented, very talented defensive end, putting the pressure on there. And this is bad. You don't want to have penalties when you're right around the red zone. Those are difficult yards to pick back up. Five penalties now, Bobby, for 42 yards in this game for Miami. Empty backfield. Here comes pressure. Raglan releases. Ball caught 20 yard line. Not enough for the first down. But considering the pressure, good catch by Mayock. And again, in a third down situation that's manageable. And that's all you're trying to do if you're the quarterback. Don't try to take it all back on one play. You're in a good situation. You have the penalty. It moves you back. All right, let's try to pick up a little bit. Give ourselves this third and four, third and five. You see a tight set here. I wouldn't be surprised to see some crossers or maybe see guys explode to the perimeter and try to out leverage this Marshall defense. Raglan likes to keep on plays like this. Straight drop back on the release, and it might have been broken up with the line of scrimmage, bringing us to a fourth down. So does Miami trailing by two scores go for the first down or settle for a makeable field goal? Well, and that's the question. How much confidence do you have in your kicker right here? Wouldn't be the easiest. It would be about a 41-yarder. They feel pretty good. They've been able to move the ball, convert, they had the play that they wanted right there, running the crossers and then flaring Kenny Young. It looks like Chuck Martin's going to go for it. I like this decision. Third attempt on fourth down already in the first half. Need to pick up four, trailing 14-0. Ragland looking. He's got a man wide open, 10-yard line. Touchdown! Jack Sorensen on the crosser. And a great job right there, the 19-yard strike. George Barnett dialing up a little play action, and this is what you can do when you have it going. You're able to run the football, sneak the crosser. Marshall's in man-to-man -man coverage like you typically would be in the uh, third or fourth and short situation. And Sorens is able to get lost in the wash, sneak across, and Raglan finds him sitting in the pocket with great poise. Now the extra point try for Samuel Sloman. <laughs> Sorens a big man on campus. 14-7 football game, good looking drive. On fourth down in this first half, Miami now two for three and the fourth down conversion, Luke Bayock was huge. Huge conversion right there, but you have to remember the plays that set that up. They're sitting in a fourth and five because you're able to take that third and 15 and pick up 10. And right here, you see the play action, you see the tight end leaking across on the front side. Sorensen's able to fill that void as I believe Chase Hancock was run out of there trying to pick up Nate Becker in front of him. It's a great job. A lot of ways this game is flipped. First quarter, Marshall dominates on offense, makes stands on defense, and now in the second quarter, Miami is starting to take some line of scrimmage control. Well, and when you get tired because you've been on the field a lot, you begin to see that affect you defensively, and that's what was affecting Marshall there late in that drive. Early in the game, they're fresh, they're getting three and outs feeling good while their offense is rolling up and down. Those tables have flipped in the second quarter. Let's see if Miami can capitalize on this, try to get a three and out quickly, and maybe get the ball back and get some, get some more points before the half. Like the headband, by the way. Head on Raglan? Yeah. That yeah, looks good. I mean, it kind of fits his personality a little bit. He's kind of the wild guy out there. Run around, make some plays. He's looking good on him. Tyler King and the home run hitter Keon Davis deep for Marshall. Thundering herd with all three timeouts remaining in the first half. So now the pressure is shifting a bit in this game. It is. When they were rolling early, you feel good as a quarterback. They had Isaiah Greenfield comfortable. They were able to run the football. They had the play action going. He's going to Tyree Brady, Obi Obialo. He's doing a great job making plays on the perimeter. Well, all of a sudden, you start putting your young quarterback in third and eight and third and long situations. You're going to put a, a lot of onus on him to make the right reads. And not that he's played poorly, but those are difficult for anybody to convert. Now you're facing a fresh Red Hawks defense who is sitting over there during another five, six minute drive. Let's see if the kid who's been through a handful of practices and got the starting nod today, a starting quarterback for Marshall. Can handle a little bit of pressure now being applied by Miami. Looking to throw on first down. A little soft toss. Incomplete. Thanks, Brady got held up. 
at the 22 yard line and he was defended again by and I like Andre Daniels. I like what they were trying to do right there work the weak side passing game as you see him going to Garner. What they really wanted to try to do is is the home run over the top to King. But Brad Kenning, a veteran linebacker, said, no way, buddy. I'm getting over the top of this, and I'm taking that away. Dikembe Mutombo would be proud of Daniels on that play, <laughs> would he not? With a wagging finger. Now to the near side. And a real pop on Tyler King, but he's very close to picking up the first down and a good defensive hit by Cedric Raymond out of Mobile, Alabama. Miami, uh, Miami losing contain here. It looked like Darius Thompson was the guy who was supposed to be over there and have it, but he comes over and finishes him off nice with a nice little pow to end Down that to thing near right. Side. And King gets 10. Good enough for a first down. Green stepping up and right into pressure and brought down back at the 30. And I think Miami, what they're trying to do here, they want to make him uncomfortable. They're going to start playing man coverage, force him to throw the ball into tight windows, and then they're adding rushers. You saw Brad Kennick add in later right there and force this. You can see him hanging out there right on the right side of your screen, trying to bowl Tyler King back, squeeze the pocket, and allows the rest of the rush to slide off and put it to, put it to Green. Nate Trawick making the tackle there. And look at Green snake his way through to the 45-yard line. But that's the other thing that Green can give you. Oh, yes. Give you 12 or 13 yards right there, right on the cusp of a first down. That's the it factor, I think, that his coaching staff talked about that he possesses. And one of the reasons he likely got the start here off the zone read. See, man, well, he's a strong physical kid, able to try to pick up yards. Junior McMullen pulls him down late. But this is a huge third down for Marshall. Because if you don't get this, you consider maybe do we go for it here we're around midfield but if we don't get that then we'd be giving Miami the ball back in good territory if they move here Doc Holliday I think has in mind we're gonna go get some points let's see if we can get a field goal and add to this lead and try to stem the momentum Green is only 19 years of age has a birthday coming up in a week on September 9 and we're placing Litton who signed with the Kansas City Chiefs as an undrafted free agent we're speaking of Chase Litton Declaring for the National Football League after last year. Isaiah Green from the gun on a third and less than one. Good stiff arm by King. He's got the first down into that second line of defense. And a first down to the 44. It's a great stiff arm right there, I believe, on number 92, Pascal Calacogno. Right on the perimeter, holds the point. Gets stiff armed right off, but in a great job there by Tyler King to turn the corner and make the play, pick up that big first down. And now if you're Marshall, you're thinking points. You've got a minute eight left. How do we try to get a touchdown? But we definitely need a field goal if nothing else. And two timeouts remaining. Play clock at five. Miami showing blitz. Here they come. Green releases and no chance for an interception ball. Well out of bounds. Back defending Daniels, number 15, along with DeAndre Montgomery, number 21, who's been playing a linebacker spot for the last three years. Yes, and this is what defensive coordinator John Hauser wants to do. We're going to start taking this to Isaiah Green. He's a young quarterback. Guy's very talented. He can make us miss. But I'm going to bring some of my veteran linebackers and Brad Kenning and Junior McMullen to see if we can start to force the issue here. We saw it pay dividends right there and a good throw away by Green. On second and ten, setting up a screen. And stopping on the clock in the short flare to Keon Davis. And he may be down. That would be a bad sign for Marshall. One of the big things they have is those two talented backs that they can rotate. The guys are almost interchangeable, very similar guys. Great hands, very athletic, explosive players. Let's see on the replay if we can determine what happened to Keon. Gets 
rolled up by a mass of bodies there. It looks like his legs could have been twisted. Maybe he came down on his shoulder. It's tough to tell from that angle with exactly what happened. Almost trying to protect himself with that left hand as he's going down. And sometimes you get that arm pinched underneath you. You know, the turf, they have all those rubber pellets in there, but it's still a lot harder than natural grass. They're doing some work over here on him. The good news is they have halftime. He's popping up. And sometimes as simple as this, you come down to a football with three guys on your back, <laughs> so there's something that's got to give. Yeah. And a lot of times that's your ribs <laughs> and the air inside of your lungs. I think he's trying to smile, though. Got eight on the play. It's third and two with 55 left to the first half. And again, Marshall, two timeouts remaining. As the clock stopped on that play, out of bounds. So third and two here. Do you, do you get Isaiah Green moving out of the pocket? Do you give it to Tyler King, let him run downhill? They've got Cody Mitchell in the game, their big tight end, 233 pounds. Let's see if they try to run it behind him. Snap to Green. Little bounce to the outside. That's worked nicely on second and third downs. King with a carry. Marshall will keep the football. And we're down to 45 for the first half. Big play for that offense. So Chuck Martin is an accountant by nature. He was accountant, I think, for 20-some years before he became a football coach. Losing contained to him probably isn't something that's very palpable that he enjoys. No. Green eludes pressure and gets a man on the outside. And Obi Obiello. Obi Obiello on the side doing a great job. The former Oklahoma State Cowboy making the play out of Cuphell, Texas. And a good job by Green. He throws the ball well on the run. Ooh, I think he may have had both feet down right there. And it was good coverage, but you had the scramble situation. And Miami continues to bring both Brad Kennig and Junior McMullen to try to force the issue to Isaiah Green. Catch. That play is under further review. So up to replay official Harold Dynas to determine if that play is good to go. You thought there were two feet in. You only need one in the college game. It looks like he has that left foot down. The right foot's dragging. Unless there's a fringe of that left foot that's on the white, and I haven't been able to see that right there. If there's a still shot that's better than that, I'd like to see it, but that's, it looks to me like that's enough to keep the play to stand. I don't think you could overturn it. Well, we've all been away from college football for a while. This is week one, and just to bring up the speed, indisputable video evidence is needed to reverse the call, which on the field was a catch. Testing out that new system that you've been looks speaking good, to. Looks good, doesn't it? Have. Yeah, it looks like they've got this thing together, working quickly. Guy on the field's taking a look at it. From what we saw, I didn't see enough to overturn it. Regular speed, by the way, is the determination for replay officials as to whether the call is confirmed or is overturned. When I look at that, I, unless there's something that he didn't see, but the officials were right on that. They looked to be able to, the line judge had a clear line of sight to his foot. It looked like he got that thing down, probably stick with it. Marshall facing a second three if the play stands. 30 seconds left, two timeouts. 30 seconds should be able to get him about five plays, depending as long as there's no scrambles. They have two timeouts to stop the clock. Ruling on the field was a catch. So we'll have a second three for the herd here. Did a good job of reading lips, by the way, there. Oh, hey, I didn't need to read lips. He gives the two hands yeah. down. That means, hey, we caught the ball. Yeah, doesn't look like an incomplete pass. So that gives Marshall a lot of options here. They're in field goal range for Rohrwasser, but certainly would like to be a lot closer for what might be more like an automatic kick as opposed to one of some well, distance. And number one rule if you're Isaiah Green, he's a young guy. Don't get sacked. Cannot take a sack at this point in time. Tenth play of the drive. Two timeouts remaining for the herd. Green to throw and man coverage. Caught! Ooh. Tyree Brady at the one yard line and double coverage. And Miami's playing man to man right now. Tyree Brady plays the X receiver. He's usually into the boundary. Excuse me, man to man. This is great coverage over here. It's an aggressive. They're letting these guys play. He gets the ball. Looks like he has possession. Gets the one foot. Did he? Oh, got that's that. going to be for review, I think, too. 
It looks like it hit. The ruling on the field is the receiver had possession of the ball with the foot down inbounds. The catch, first down. It looks like that foot came down, but I'm not quite sure. I'm was surprised it's not being reviewed yet. Oh, they're going to get to that. You would think, and now some whistles, and we will have a review. The previous play is under further review. Did you see the catch earlier today by T.J. Vassar? Looked like Odell Beckham with the oh. one hand. <laughs> Let's now, take a look at this. Great coverage. Brady Aggressive. didn't need the one hand. but Good uh, job by Brady. Does he get that left foot down or does it just, yeah, it came down right there. He's okay. got it. It hit the ground. This is going to be a catch. This is an easy, great call by the official right there. This is going to be an easy replay. This angle, it's tough to tell. It looks like he almost sweeps that foot and it doesn't necessarily get the ground. You can see right there, it kicks up. This should stand. Third ball at the one yard line. That's field judge Pat Dolphin with the call there. And again, the ruling was a catch. Oh yeah, he knows. Hey, what's the big deal here? Why are we holding up the game? Tyree Brady, and we're going to talk about watching some, of, some great football players. Tyree Brady, he has a future at the next level. In fact, when he asked Chuck Martin, head coach of Miami, about him, he says, well, he's awesome. <laughs> he said all their receivers. You look at Obi Obialo, transfer from Oklahoma State. Tyree Brady, transfer from Miami. These guys are going to big time elite power five schools. They got recruited there for a reason. And now they're here at Marshall. They're making some big plays. After further review, the receiver had his left foot down inbounds. He maintained, maintained control of the ball as he went to the ground. It's a catch. The play is confirmed, first down. First and goal. Again, two Marshall timeouts remaining, so can run the football. And even if there's a stop by the Miami defense, it'll have time to run another couple of plays. The great news is, for Marshall, like you said, the two timeouts. So they can pretty much do whatever they want. 24 seconds is plenty of time. Nothing should take too long. Look for him to go to Brady down here at the bottom again. Snap to Green, handoff straight ahead. Touchdown, Marshall. Anthony Anderson, his second of the game. It's a big answer to Miami's defensive stops here in the second quarter when the Red Hawks were gaining a little momentum. And as you can see him get behind this big offensive line again, a little split zone. It's something they've run every time on the goal line. They got a much better push here than they were getting earlier in that drive. And that's something that's going to make Chuck Martin sick. They've been, they've been doing a great job. It looked like they got stuff tied off. It had a little momentum, 14-7 after having a great drive. And now you give that right back to the herd here heading into halftime. This is the third drive for touchdown, Bobby, of 75 yards or better for Marshall. That's impressive. Oh, it's a great, that, you know what that is? It's consistency. Mm -hmm. You have limited penalties. You're getting positive yards. You're probably reviewing this now. This half was going far too smooth, Jim. Hope we didn't jinx it. Well, you know college football's been lengthened by all the passing we see and the scoring. So I wonder if there isn't a way sometimes with some of these plays that appear to be more authentic than others. And I know they review all scoring plays. But maybe on some that appear to be no doubts um, we looked, need to go to replay. It looked like he got into me unless his knee drags somewhere. I'm, that looks like a no-brainer to me. He's falling. His knees are hitting the goal line. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure where the rest of his torso must have fallen. I'm not a physics major by any stretch, but I'm pretty sure that there had to be something there to fall into the end zone. After review, the ruling on the field of a touchdown stands. You're teaching an equity pla uh, class though at Ohio State, so that's that's still pretty impressive. Well, it's not too bad. It's, I don't know if that qualifies me to be an official though. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying my best. <laughs> when I played, I had all the answers though. Uh, oh, sure. If you want to ask any player out there, they'll tell you if it's a touchdown to catch. all or players do. Matt Beardall will snap. Jackson White will hold. And Justin Rohrwasser to kick. 21-7 Marshall. Big play of the drive to Tyree Brady, 21 yards and touchdown by Anthony Anderson, his second in the game in a drive that took just two minutes and change. And I would have to imagine that Chuck Martin, when they get this ball, assuming it's kicked in the end zone and they don't have much of a turn, if any, that 
they'll probably just need this thing out and get to halftime. Especially since they'll get the ball to start the second half. They're going to have the ball coming out, unless they're able to catch us in the field and have a big return on a touchback or anything else. Sometimes it's better just to get to halftime, regroup, you're down two scores, you have the ball coming out, you punch it in right there, then you're only down a touchdown and your defense is fresh with the ability to get a stop. 31 Maurice Thomas, one of the deep men, is someone with the potential to make a long run. Justin Rowasser to kick off. Returnable for Thomas inside the 10. Still going with a football, running down to the near side. And tackle just beyond the 30. All right, 12 seconds to go. You do have two timeouts remaining. Take a shot. I'm going to tell you this. I've watched this go worse many more times than I've watched it go better. So you're saying no? No. Okay. Last, you know, last year I watched a game with Eastern Michigan try to do something like this at the end of the game, end of the half. And you know what happened? A pick six the other way. Blew up. And th that's, you knee it out, you get to halftime right here. 12 seconds isn't enough to really have a realistic shot. Smart move by Chuck Martin. Scoop Jackson of ESPN with the sights and sounds of college football returning to this great country at halftime. Marshall's led from the start, which is what the herd did last year. And the rookie quarterback Isaiah Green has found Tyree Brady on a number of occasions. Halftime in just a moment. As you know, this is week one of college football. Scoop Jackson of ESPN catches the sights and sounds of the beginning of 2018. It's a season to fight. Give nothing and take everything. I will. Finish off. I will. Finish off. I will. Life is a test that every day we are forced to answer to and for something that is necessary for our survival. We got 30 minutes. Let's go for the rest of our lives. This game is no different. A 17 week capsule of how to survive a season of life. Make sure you're preparing today to go win a championship. Mental exams, physical quizzes, polls, assessments. All about finding the proficiency of not just knowledge, but of determination, drive, consistency, and the insane ability to bring your A game every week. Because B's and C's can turn into F's if you let them. One failing grade can be held against you the entire semester. A grading curve steep and unforgiving. What was he thinking? Oh my goodness. All the band is out on the field! A test is an event. A test of time. A test of wills. A testament of hope, faith, belief, brotherhood, sacrifice, and family. A perseverance that all leads to a statement of greatness. Crowned by what a champion looks like once the final exam is turned in. Every day, we got a gang grind. There are no days off. When we come back, a look at Conference USA and the Mid-American Conference for 2018. Thundering Herd, good looking first half, leading Miami 21-7 as we approach more of halftime and get ready for the start of the second half. Jim Barber, former Ohio State great Bobby Carpenter. Before we take a look at the polls for the Conference USA preseason, about Marshall's chances to win the league and what we've seen for the first two quarters. Well, I like what they've done this year. You know, if you look at what they were trying to get done last season, they're really good throwing the football. They still have those same guys, Obi Obialo, and you also have Tyree Brady, two very good receivers. But what they've been able to do 
is they've been able to run the football much better. They want to be more balanced this year, and they've been able to do that so far in the first half. Pick to finish second in the East behind Lane Kiffin's Florida Atlantic team, which got bounced today by 49 by Oklahoma. North Texas becomes the fifth team favorite to win the West over the last five years in a very competitive division. All right, that's Conference USA. Let's talk a little bit about the Mid-American Conference. Had a chance to see Ball State the other night and looking much better than last year because the injury situation on offense was cleared up. For the first two quarters of Miami, any impressions that stick out? Miami looks good. They've been able to run the football pretty well. The defense was able to pick up. They've really made some strides, but they're going to have a tough time with their big rival, the Ohio Bobcats. Pick the finish first. I believe that 21 first place votes. Buffalo coming in with one. Miami with two, though. This team with Chuck Martin is tough. They have some veteran leaderships, but it's going to be tough to knock off the Bobcats this year. Northern Illinois on the road today at Iowa, Ohio. A tough matchup at home against Howard and Buffalo. Lance Leipold won a lot of titles in Division Three with Wisconsin Whitewater. Bobby and I returned for first half highlights, dominated initially by Marshall. Little hope and glimpse of light for Miami in the middle of the second quarter. To the first half stats we go. Marshall's running game setting the tempo for the three touchdown drives of 75 80 and 75 yards and just one penalty committed and on top of that no turnovers so so far and when you speak of that you speak of rookie quarterback Isaiah Green getting the start today for Marshall Jim Barber Bobby Carpenter back here in the broadcast position at Miami University and because of the fact he's made no mistakes and looked rather poised his team is up two scores well that's what you want to see out of your freshman quarterback coming in there not making mistakes no interceptions no fumbles 12 of 20 he's been efficient on third down he scrambled when he's need to made some plays with his feet and he's kept the chains moving they're three of five on third down that's allowed them to have long drives and punch it in at the end the thundering herd have three rushing touchdowns of this game all in the first half, Keon Davis got the first after a long drive. That made it seven nothing in favor of Marshall, and away we go at that point for the herd. You see them were able to get pushed early. Keon Davis getting downhill, getting in there. He's the first thundering herd to find pay dirt. You see Anthony Anderson doing it, the big physical power back, also pounding in there. But after that, Miami's defense stiffened up a little bit, and then it was Gus Ragland's turn to make some plays, finding Jack Sorensen here on the crosser on a big fourth down, picking up 18 yards and a touchdown. And then you see some sweet footwork here by Isaiah Green to get out of the pocket, finding Obi Obialu on the sideline. Look at him drag those toes. And there's one guy who's excited, and that's Tyree Brady, because he's had a heck of a day here as well. And he also had a big play down the sideline, leading to this final score before the half. Marshall head coach Doc Holliday says about his receivers, best receiving core we have ever had at this school in the nine years he's been here. And that's made a big difference. And I imagine when you have the Randy Moss jersey number somewhere in the arena, that uh, that inspires you. It is, but that's one thing that Marshall's always had is there's elite playmakers on the back end on defense and then on the outside offensively. They've been able to push the ball. It limits what Miami can do. They've had to play man to take care of Isaiah Green, and that's allowed Brady and company to make some plays. Chuck Martin's speech at halftime to the Red Hawks and – what type of emphasis might we see here in the third quarter? They have to continue to string together drives. Defensively, they've got to get off the field. They've had Marshall in some third and long situations. They've allowed Isaiah Green to get out of the pocket, make plays with his feet, and then also push the ball down the field. If the Red Hawks tighten up defensively, maybe get a score here on the opening drive, we're in for a great game. Thundering Herd have won nine of the last ten, and that includes last year's victory by a score of 31-26. to We're coming back with the second half, and again, Miami – which won the toss, selected to defer, and that means the Red Hawks get the football to start this second half. Back to business here in a moment. Giving some love so far to the Marshall offense, but let's take a look at the thundering herd defensively in the first half, allowing just seven points. 34 plays, 181 yards for Miami. This is Gus Ragland. And their running attack took a while to get started, Bobby, because of the thundering herd front four. They didn't. One of the reasons why it took long to get started is they were never able, to, never able to get a first down and develop any type of continuity. The herd defense was flying around, getting three and outs, and until you're able to get a couple of first downs, get your feet under you, you have to remember this is the opening game of the season, and on top of it, they had a two-and-a-half-hour delay, so it's safe to say that the routine was broken. It took Miami about a quarter to get going, but once they did, they were rolling. You can see Doc Holliday was a little concerned in the second quarter there, but felt, had to feel much better finishing off the half with the touchdown. Doc in his ninth season at head coach in Huntington, West Virginia. 
of the Marshall Thundering Herd. So Jalen Bester, 18, 31, Maurice Thomas. Nobody's been able to make a return off kickoffs in this game yet. You can fair catch the football outside the goal line and get it up to the 25. That is one of the craziest rules that, uh, you know, when they instituted that, the touchbacks are from, to me, it's, you know, in the end zone. Now you can have a touchback, you know, in the field of play, get it out to 25, trying to make the game safer, I get it, but it's still going to take a little bit of time for a more traditionalist like myself to kind of get used to that aspect. Well, our referee Thursday night at Ball State actually made reference to the crowd the first time that happened to indicate it. this is a rule change. And there are many rule changes in 2018. There'll be more in 2019, the odd year. But that's one of them, and it's definitely different. Got a little night football here coming, something we didn't expect at the start of this game. Yes, sir. Maurice Thomas getting a look. There is a flag toward the end of the play. Often that's holding. Maurice Thomas, who has battled a lot of things in his career, including a leg injury last year in which he missed nine games. Holding. Number 44, offense, 10 yard penalty, remains first down. On tight end, Nate Becker is the hold. Nate, Nate Becker, very versatile player, but typically when you get on the outside, you see him pulling around right there. He's the point of attack block. It's supposed to go up inside, and you can see him get locked up on there on Artis Johnson, the very talented linebacker for the herd. Gives him a little extra tug with that left hand after the play. Should have just let him go, because I think it was clear, the running back was clear anyway. So instead of a gain of nine and second and one, it is now first and 20. Inside handoff. Not much there, maybe a couple. This game began for Miami in which it gained a minus three yards rushing in the first two possessions while Marshall was marching down the field to score twice. And I guarantee you this is how Chuck Martin drew up the start of the second half. You have a nice positive play, set yourself up to be on track, you know, second seven, second six. Unfortunately, you have a holding. Now you're forced back into a first and 20, and you want to run the ball to keep some balance. Kenny Young not able to pick up a whole lot. And now this is going to be a situation where, hey, can we try to find a way to get 8 to 12 yards to put ourselves back into a third and manageable situation? This is Martin's 50th game as head coach at Miami. 16 wins, 33 losses. Raglan, short little release. Kenny Young is pushed out of bounds. They will spot him at the 27. So to get most of it back. So instead of second and 18, it is now third and eight. Third and eight, you can do something with this. It's less than ideal, but you see the speed of Kenny Young there getting on the perimeter, getting up the sideline. Third and eight now. You see him going to a personnel grouping here. They have two running backs on the field, make it look like a, a three wide receiver set or even a four wide receiver set, but they've got Andrew Homer here at the bottom of the screen. I'm curious if they try to work one of those two guys in the middle of the field on one of the linebackers. Look for 81 on the near side, James Gardner, who is 6'4. Raglan flushed out. And he must throw it away. And so a good defensive start for Miami, as it was in the first half. Now here in the second, pressure from 94, Channing Haynes, the redshirt junior from Baltimore. He was, Ames was applying the pressure there, but you were right on it. Gus Raglan looking at the bottom of the screen, trying to find James Gardner, but a great job there by Chris Jackson. And that's a battle we've kind of seen develop through the first half now. And Chris Jackson won that last round. And so the herd's going to get pretty good field position, assuming it handles the punt, which will bounce at the 35 and take a gorgeous Miami roll. Spot near the 15 yard line, a punt of 58 yards. How about flipping the field on that one? It Moments ago, Marshall forcing Miami into its first three and out. Bobby Carpenter, Jim Barber, back with the Marshall offense and the redshirt freshman Isaiah Green. And critical opportunity here for Miami. They've got to find a way to get a stop. They have an empty possession coming out of the half. You're down 21-7. You can't let this herd offense start rolling on you. If it goes to 28-7, that'll dictate the way Miami has to call plays because they'll have to be aggressive to get back in it. To the money man, 
Tyree Brady on first down. That was a great punt, by the way. Moments ago, a 58-yard zero return from Kyle Kramer, who punted 64 times last year in 12 games. That's more than five punts per. Well, that's two ways to look at that. Number one, maybe you don't want to be punting that much. Number two, hopefully you're not turning the ball over, so at least your, your drives are ending in a kick, which is better than an interception or a fumble. Good way to look at it. I'll try to find the positive in every situation. I can see that second and five in a crossing pattern, and they'll strike. Obiello, first down, Marshall. Running a little simple slant flat combination at the top of the field to Obi Riallo. And does a good job getting inside. Nice strike here by Green. This is a quarterback front friendly play. Very easy. Miami's been in man to man. And he's working right at the top on Zedrick Raymond. And that's a great way to move the sticks. And it's a nice drive starter there for the Thundering Herd. And you mentioned quarterback friendly, a very difficult play to defend. Back to the run, stretched out nicely by the defense of Miami. As Keon Davis didn't have much much room to room. Well, these Miami Marshall receivers are very difficult to defend in general. They're very, very talented. When you look at the skills they have, but that's an encouraging sign right there if you're a Red Hawk fan, watching them string out a run in the first half in the second half. They weren't able to do that at the start of the first. If you can limit Marshall and make them one-dimensional, try to push this onto Isaiah Green and force him to beat you, you'll feel a lot better than that than letting Tyler King and Keon Davis run downhill on your defense. Green has been sacked just once. The team has just one penalty. It's going to have a second one here. Potentially, although it's likely that Miami may choose to decline it. Unless it's penalty in which there's intentional grounding and Green is hanging his head, but instead it's holding. Holding, number 24, offense, 10 yard penalty. Remain second down. Let me ask you, Bobby, why not take the play and make it third and long? Well, because they're gonna make it second and even longer right here. And I think they realize Marshall has some elite players, but you see Rad Kennig right there, the veteran linebacker just bowl over Keon Davis, trying to put pressure on Isaiah Green. And this is something that they found worked pretty well at the, the end of the first half, bringing both Brad Kennick and Junior McMullen to try to squeeze the pocket and make it difficult for Isaiah Green to feel comfortable. Kennick tops and tackles last year for Miami with 102. Green with pressure. He's going to run out of it. Turns a negative into a positive. It's going to be hard to sack. He is, and let's go back to your last question. Do you take the third and 10, or do you try to push him back to a uh, second well, and 20? Well, now it's third and 13, 14, so it's, so it's a good good play. Hey, here's the answer. If they pick up more than 10 yards, it's a bad decision. Sure. You know, but if you leave them at third and 10, and sometimes they, they convert it, then you know what? You're sitting in the same boat. So it, it's just difficult. You have to have a good feel for the game and what your defense really wants to do. In that situation, I would have taken the penalty, but there's a lot of times, hey, if I'm third and 12, I'd rather live one more down and see if we can get off right there. Got to get the ball to the Marshall 42. We'll Green up. looking. Got a man. And broken up at the last second. That was a nice defensive play by DeAndre Daniels, who dove at the last second to break up the pass. It looked like it was going to be hauled in by Brady. Little twist game by Miami up front to try to create some pressure there on Isaiah Green. You see him sitting in the pocket. Trying to find, and he has to throw it over a defender right there. I believe that's number 38, maybe Brad Kennick. And he has to put a little more air on that ball to Brady than he wanted. And, and that made him allow to put that air under it. Miami's making the play, get off the field on third down here. And now they'll maybe have better field position to see what they can do with. So after a Marshall first down, must give up the ball. Short. And it roll out of bounds just past the 35 yard line. Well, Miami shows some signs defensively and being able to try to turn this game around, Bobby. Chuck Martin must be living right. You get the long roll on your punt, you get the short roll on this punt, get off on third down, Red Hawk ball. Just 26 yards. On the left of your screen there, DeAndre Daniels who now has five tackles and a pass breakup. So the defense does its job for Miami. Now it's time for the offense to 
get it in gear. Well, this is a great opportunity for Gus Raglan. You have the ball at your own 36-yard line. Great field position. See how aggressive they are early. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to pick up a chunk on the first play. Raglan to the flat. Not a chance for James Gardner. And this is something they're doing with Gardner a little more this year. Typically, he used to line up just to the boundary. He was a guy that they'd always put over there on the same matchup. But now they're trying to move him around, put him to the field side, put him in the slot, try to create a difficult matchup, maybe put him on a linebacker or safety so you can take advantage of his size and speed. Three catches of the game for Gardner now for 39. That one going as an incompleted pass. Miami's run the ball a lot after an incomplete pass. So let's see if, see if they stay with that theory to try to give him a third and manageable. Little pitch out. No, quarterback keep. Ragland didn't get anything. Miami's front four spelled it out. And it got a little help also from the secondary Malik Gant, number 29, who came up with a stick. And trying to do a little play action there. And you see they're cutting it off. And that's almost looks like it's a designed read, but I think that's a designed keep right there. He's trying to push the ball. And you see Malik Gant coming up. Very sure tackler. The do-it-all guy at the back of this defense. They move around. And he has been defined by Doc Holliday as the best tackler out there in that secondary. So now it's third and predictable for Miami. Gus Raglan 0 for 3 in the first half or second half. With time. He's trying now to, fourth down. Trying to thread it in there to James Gardner at the top on a little seam slant route. And Gus Raglan hasn't been near as accurate here in the third quarter as he was in the second. See, he's got plenty of time. Hot feet. Well, he had a, a defender coming right in the alleyway right there. He still could have slid that in. It's tough because he's trying to go to his best receiver in James Gardner, and the Thundering Herd are all over him. They were going to force someone else to try to beat them. Well, Rags, Gus Raglan, 0 for 4 in the second half, now under 50% for the game, 10 of 22. Tyler King all the way back to his 10, and now inside the 10, so another terrific punt by Kyle Kramer. This one good for 53, and here in the second half, he has been the Miami offense. Miami season opener as it is for Marshall. Miami's homecoming today. These fans, a long day now seeping in tonight as this game originally scheduled for 3.30 Eastern time did not start due to weather until 6. Jim Barber, Bobby Carpenter, Brad Koenig, who had 14 tackles, six of those solo at Marshall last year and five tonight back on the defense for Miami. And a lot of credit again to punter Kramer, who has just dished another dandy moments ago for 53 yards to pin Marshall deep. Brad Kenning's the emotional leader of this defense. Neither one of these teams have captains for the entire year. They assign them on the game day, and both of the coaches have a similar philosophy on it. They think all their seniors are leaders, and they want those guys to always be involved, always engaged in the leadership. And Brad Kenning having another great day today, putting a lot of pressure on Isaiah, Isaiah Green. They decided to start bringing him here in the second quarter and in the second half. And because of that, it's put pressure on Green, and he hasn't been nearly as comfortable as he was in the first quarter. How important is it to be named a captain? I think it's a great honor, but the problem is he's uh, talking to Chuck Martin and Doc Holliday. It was, it was a similar, similar issue. He goes, you may have eight or nine great senior leaders on your team. You select three or four captains, and then all of a sudden you've got six or seven guys who say, well, why not me? And he goes, they have a great point. So it's a big issue right there. You can see him right there, Kenny coming on the pressure. Tyree Brady getting outside and making some more plays. It's a tough catch by Brady. He's got great hands. The guy's an elite receiver. He's an NFL guy. I would not be surprised to see him drafted next year. You know, fairly high in the NFL draft with his size and speed combination. Originally a member of the U, then transferring to Huntington, West Virginia, and on first down with an effective passing game, a huge hole for Tyler King and another first down. Tyler King upset because you see the size of this hole right here. Miami bringing pressure off the edge. Great job picking it up. It was a good job seaming it. If he breaks that tackle, he knew there was probably 20 or 30 more yards for him to pick up. But this is what we saw in the first quarter yes. out of this Marshall offense. They're able to get a push up front and dictate their will. Miami got that corrected in the second quarter and at the beginning of this second half here. But it looks like it could be changing now as this Thundering Herd offense can impose their will a little more. 
wonder who that is down. It looks. That is Brad. Koenig. That is Brad Koenig, and that is a big, that would be a big loss. He looks to be okay and having a conversation. Hopefully it's just Cram's first game of the season right here. But he's the emotional leader, fifth-year senior, three-year starter, and he's the guy that's been making plays. So it's great to see him walk off. Hopefully he'll be returning shortly for the Red Hawks. It is, to say the least, a muggy night tonight for both teams. It's rained all day. Yeah. Backed off the temperature with the first monsoon, about 10 or 15 degrees, but then it rose again as is typical in the Midwest <laughs> in late summer. I mean, the real Warriors are here, the production team that's been putting this thing on since about 8 o'clock this morning. Kind of hope they're getting paid by the hour. <laughs> First and 10, Marshall 40. Green trying to set up a screen. Instead, has got him in. It's King who released and catches inside the 45-yard line. He's not a big pass catcher. Just 12 receptions last year, but a nice reception. He has great hands. What you see the play action fake here. They go right after Miles Reed. Who did Miles Reed come in for? Brad Kennig. Yes. We're going to fake the play action, try to sneak him up the rail there in man to man coverage. A better thrown ball, and that might have been to pay dirt. Alex Thompson was in position to start this game. It was a duel between the two quarterbacks Thompson and Green. Doc Holliday didn't announce until kickoff it would be Green. Green is not disappointed. The best part for Doc is he had three extra hours to make that decision today. At least not tell us, right? <laughs> At least I, I'm assuming the quarterbacks knew, yeah. but we were kept in the dark. Sure. Imagine coaches doing that to the media. Green didn't like what he saw. Throws underneath, close to the first down marker, short by a yard. Finding Willie Johnson there on the cross. That's a veteran move by Green. You see him in the pocket, taking some heat, steps up, realizes it's not there. Still keeps his eyes downfield, finds Willie Johnson. And this puts him in a great third and one as opposed to probably a third and five. That may be DeAndre Daniels who is down. And cramping could very easily be an issue in this heat as he is downing some fluid immediately. Well, and this is the situation now when they've changed, you know, how football, the preparation time, I believe they cut back from four, four practices. Four practices and just the way the calendar fell. So you take four practices out. Guys are no longer allowed to have two a days. They have a walkthrough for the second practice. And, you know, not, not that I'm against that, but you, you know, Add that in with a particularly mild August here in the Midwest where it hasn't really been 90 degrees and sweltering. All of a sudden you get a day where it's 80 degrees and there's a nice, nice thick cloud of humidity sitting here in Yeager Stadium. It's going to be a difficult situation for these guys. And you take into the fact that most of them probably thought by this time they're going to be showered up and walking around campus. Watching Notre Dame, Michigan, among other things. By the way, the temperature in Oxford is going to bump up considerably this week. It'll reach the 90s on Monday. And that doesn't factor in the humidity, which sometimes can bring the heat index over 100. Oh, and when you're in a stadium like this, it's at the bottom of the hill, sitting here in the River Valley, trees everywhere. Not a whole lot of air movement. It's a pretty stagnant place. And so you're starting to see these guys cramp up. You know, when they're, they're hydrating and they're preparing before the game, you have things that you do as you count down. Two hours before the game, I drink a bottle of water as I'm getting ready and stretching out, and then I do this, and then I maybe take, you know, part of this Gatorade or these electrolytes. And so that all gets thrown off when you have these long delays and you start to get hungry, and then you need to eat. And so everything, the way that it's always been for you in your routine, it, it completely goes out the window. So that's probably part of the reason that you may be seeing that for these guys as well. It means the cool zone will be of comfort after the cramping is eliminated. But it's third and short for Marshall on a drive that started back at the Marshall 10. And that's easy money with this offensive line, a veteran line pushing forward for guys like Keon Davis. Keon Davis did a great job finding some pay dirt there. Brad Kenny shooting in the backfield, trying to make a play, couldn't. It was pouring rain earlier here, and it's since stopped, but that's contributed to this humidity, and you see it right here. It was coming down in sheets. Back to live action in good conditions. Good fake, got a man, that's Brady. Touchdown! And that might be the play that breaks this thing open. Going back down to the bottom of the field. 
your boundary corner here, you run some great play action. Not a whole lot of pressure. Isaiah Green having plenty of time. Safety DeAndre Montgomery trying to get over the top, but it just wasn't to be a well-thrown ball to the outside. And Tyree Brady is going to make you pay each and every time. As good as advertised. He is. He's made some great catches tonight. He's picked up a bunch of penalties, and now he's putting, putting in the pay dirt as well. So for the record, two scoring drives of 75 yards apiece, one of 80, now 90, Bobby. Marshall's put together some long sustained drives, something you typically don't see to start the season. This offense is humming on all cylinders for the most part, and it's even more impressive when you have a first year starting quarterback. You got us a red shirt freshman, very talented and Isaiah Green, showed tremendous poise, a nice air under the ball, some nice touch. And look at this thing, it just drops right in the bucket. Not really a chance for anyone to make a play out inside the corner, just far enough outside the safety. And this is a huge drive now for Miami as they have to get points if they want to keep this in a situation where they don't have to go into two minute offense. I think it was the new offensive coordinator, Tim Cramsey at Marshall, when talking about his quarterback, was the poise is something that really stuck out. And we're seeing a lot of that poise so far because I watched that replay. He looked so comfortable. It looked like a practice throw for him. Uh, it didn't look, didn't look like he was going to be hit at all. He stood there, didn't overstride, just flipped it up, tossed that thing in the bucket like he was trying to do a ring toss at the fair. Yeah. Good comparison. Maurice Thomas got home run ability. And a nice return close to the 30. Back to the combination of Green and Brady, whom we highlighted, by the way, in the beginning. Uh, I mean, if they're going to have success, but you see how comfortable he looks there. Brady stacks the corner, gets inside of him, but doesn't get so tight that the free safety can come over and help make a play. And that's how you draw it up if you're a coach, when you see single coverage on the outside to an elite weapon like that. So the new coordinator, Tim Cramsey, over from Sam Houston State, they're very excited about getting him to Huntington, West Virginia. This offense looks pretty smooth today. It looks great. And Chuck Martin was talking. He watched film from Sam Houston State, Nevada, <laughs> Montana yeah. State, trying to figure out exactly because they did different stuff every place. I had no idea what I was going to see today. I think it was 24-7 film watching for him. Raglan under pressure, incomplete. And a nice toss there to the perimeter by Raglan, looking at his big target, Luke Mayock. He had some big throws earlier that he was able to catch on some comebacks, not able to get it done there. And this is a situation, you have a drive starter at the beginning, you're hoping to pick up a quick eight to 10 yards, get the chains rolling a little bit, it's incomplete. Now you're facing a second and 10, where Miami, after a first down incompletion, has run it most often, but the herd has been all over it, and they haven't really given a whole lot of room. Chris Jackson, number three, back defending for Marshall, as he has on a number of plays tonight. There's that run on second down you talked about. And about half the distance to first down by Kenny Young. But that's a successful play right there for Miami. You're putting yourself in that third and manageable. And it's crazy as this may seem, Jim, they have stats, they break it out. We used to have all the time in the NFL, odds of throwing after an incompletion on first down. And there were some teams, they'd be as high as 80 or 90%. Really? They called them get back on track plays. So that now you're third and five. You're on track to be able to pick up that first down instead of facing a third and 10. This offense of Miami dominated last year, not tonight against Marshall. 5.40 to go, third quarter. Raglan, double pumps, got a man. That's Kenny Young on the outside, that's a first down. The official stick will be the 43, a pickup of 10. Raglan looking comfortable in the pocket right there, allowing uh, Kenny Young to slip out of the backfield. And this is a situation that had two running backs in. They also, the, finding Kenny Young on the perimeter right there, using that mismatch of speed and his running back ability to find the sideline after the catch. That's number five, carry out Morrell back defending. Time left for Miami to make a run in this game. Faking the jet sweep, Ragland's got him. It's Sorensen, race to the goal line. Horse collar. Yep, and they're going to add some more yards on it. He was horse collared, but that probably was the only way he could be brought down. There's some penalties that aren't bad, and right there you're going to give your defense a chance to get a stop. But you see Miami right there. A lot of teams, when they cross the 50, they're going to try to take a shot. Come on, come on. The play Personal action. foul. Horse collar tackle. Number eight, defense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. 
Jack's got two catches both times. They've been hard. It's been difficult for Marshall to pick him up. Oh, and it's a great job there. They're in the play action, a little jet sweep. Find Sorensen right down the middle of the field. Horse collar now. And this is the drive that Miami needed. They needed to be on the one-yard line. Look at that. Sorensen sneaking down the middle. The safety getting aggressive, trying to get down Brandon Drayton. And Sorensen does a great job slipping over the top. And a nice ball by Ragland. First and goal from the one. Off the fank, Ragland. Hey, that's what do you think about that call? That's a veteran quarterback right there. They're trying to run some play action, move the pocket. Think they can catch Marshall napping. They're all over that play. Just throw it away. Would you not have preferred to run? Well, maybe run it. But we saw a flag come in right here. They have an offsides, an encroachment on the defense. So it won't matter. So it doesn't matter. Now they're sitting here staring at a first and goal from the one-yard line. I would anticipate you're going to get a nice dose right here of Alonzo Smith, who just came in, the big 215-pound power back out of Riviera Beach, Florida. Four chances for the one. Here's the first one. They won't need the others. Touchdown, Miami. And the 52-yard play that set up the touchdown from Rags to Riches, you might say. And Jack Sorensen has life for Miami. Well, Sorensen did a great job of getting him down there with Raglan. But now you get to see Alonzo Smith, the big power back, hammered in there from the one-yard line. And that is this Red, this Red Hawks crowd fired up. And now we're back in the game. Four minutes left in the third quarter. You get a stop, and you feel good if you're Miami. Sam Sloman for the extra point. Marshall 28, Miami 14. Much needed scoring drive for the Red Hawks. Six plays. 72 yards and a buck 54. So the answer, the scoring drive of Marshall, which took a little over two minutes with a quick and efficient drive of its own. Both of these teams, once they get a couple first downs, you can see the offense start to click. They fall in the rhythm, and then they're able to take those shots down the field no to be able to have that success. good. And we just found out that the play was good. I don't know what they were reviewing right there, except for the fact Alonzo Smith just getting big, using those shoulder pads and going right over the top. Now for Miami, you have to have a good feeling about this. Can we pin them deep? Can we get a three and out? And conversely, your Marshall, as the Green's been good, they've been able to run the football. They started getting back into what they were doing in the first quarter when they were really pushing the line of scrimmage and resetting that against a pretty good Miami defensive front. This has been a nice chess match back and forth because at times it doesn't look like we've been watching the same game. No. Jack Sorensen now two catches for 73 yards. One touchdown and a big play that sets up the other one out of 54 yards. Now Miami's been pounding this ball in the end zone, not giving the talented returners from Marshall, Tyler King and Keon Davis, any daylight. The thing is it only takes one miss hit to hang that ball up because these guys are not going to fair catch it if they are not in the end Yeah, zone. especially in the case of Keon Davis with kickoff returns for scores last year on opening day against Miami of 99 and 97 yards. Miami still very much in it. Now down by two touchdowns. And from the 25 will begin all four scoring drives tonight for Marshall. 75 yards or beyond. I'll tell you this, I think Chuck Martin may have been the happiest coach in college football with the new rule with the touchbacks automatically in the end zone after what happened last oh, year. Yes. <laughs> he told his kicker, pound it in there, don't give these guys an opportunity no. to bring it out. Let's let our defense line up on the 25 and try to defend 75 yards worth of field because they probably felt pretty good about this coming in. They didn't anticipate Isaiah, Isaiah Green being this polished for a redshirt freshman starter. Well, part of the problem, I suppose, for Martin and his defense was to get a read on Isaiah Green. Get a read on, we're talking to 
Chuck Martin about which quarterback he's going to play. Just crap. I don't know what exactly offense I'm going to see. Yeah. Got a man down the field and it's dropped. That might have been six. I looked at. I was looking like he was going to be six. That's a great job by Gaines getting down the middle of the field, stacking up the wide receiver. And it's a nice ball by Isaiah Green. Look at him sit in the pocket. He's comfortable. He just flips that thing with his wrist and drops it right to Gaines in stride. Oh, it looked beautiful. And Gaines, the tight end, sneaks right through the, the seam. He caught the opening touchdown pass, or play to set up that first score. Try to go to him again, but it wasn't to be. The Lime is going to have to find a way to defend these receivers because they, as talented as they are, are performing nicely in the game. And you know, Tim Cramsey was suggesting to us earlier in the week, talk a lot about Green and his deceptive ability and his ability to make plays, but the fact of the matter is, despite that athleticism, he is a pocket passer and he's very, very composed. Oh, he sits there and most of these young quarterbacks, if you don't if you don't pressure them, they're gonna feel good in the pocket. The way that high school offenses are, they throw the ball 50 times a game growing up. Green looks very, very confident in the pocket right there. But now you got to see when Miami brings a little pressure and they bring Kennedy McMullen, will he be able to hang in the pocket the same way? They rush four, gets rid of it at the last moment, and that's going to be enough for a first down. And that's tough when you're Miami, you've done everything you need to do. You flush Green from the pocket. You make him check it down to a running back. But Keon Davis, so explosive, such a good center of gravity, able to push through the tackle. And as we see Green rolling out of the pocket here, avoids Kenny and does a great job using that leg strength to get just across the line to game in 35. Yeah, just across is right by a foot. That it extends the drive and eats some more clock. A lot of things to like about this Marshall offense tonight, Bobby. Oh, they look very good at times, but then there's other times where the Miami defense right there steps up, does a good job on first down, holds them to one yard, and this is this is something that's tough to kind of rationalize the two two teams that you're seeing at times. Sometimes both offenses look great, other times they sputter around and you look like they're unsure of what they're trying to do. Under three to go, third quarter. Heard as it did last year, has never trailed against. The Miami Red Hawks pressure from the right side coming after Green gets rid of it and it's incomplete. And that one right there, Green looked like he was trying to throw that out of bounds and he wanted to throw it over to Brady to make sure that he wouldn't get intentional grounding, but he left it in bounds. And if you saw it landed right there on the edge of the white, that would have been that would have been a very, very devastating play for the herd had someone been there for Miami to be able to make that play. It's a young guy, got to get that thing. Hey, yep. when they say throw a 10 rows deep, they mean throw they a mean 10 it. rows deep. <laughs> Third and eight. Big and play Miami here. Step up. Big play for the Red Hawks. Look for a little pressure. They got Canaan walked up in the A gap. Sending four. Tough catch. Not going to happen. Intended for Brady. Ball back to Miami off the punt. Chuck Martin talks about them wanting to be able to play man against these athletic receivers on the outside, and they've pretty much stuck with a free safety in the middle of the field, manning up on the perimeter, and trying to bring some pressure up front to disrupt Green. So it's very, it's been very impressive at times, but then there's also times where guys have gotten free, but on that big third down, they did exactly what they needed to do, forced a high pass, and Brady was not able to come down with it. In the meantime, Kenny Young back at his own 20. But the important thing is Miami's going to get the ball back and a chance to make it a one score game. Young 25 and a return of nine. Red Hawks have pretty good field position sitting here at the 20 on yard line. Not quite the three and out. Only allow one first down though. And now you're going to see Gus Raglan and company coming back. And I look for them to try to take some more shots. Their play action game is going really well. That's what Doc Holliday was worried about, is the fact that you press up to stop all their short stuff. They run so much action in the backfield that sometimes you get lazy with your eyes. And you have a guy like Jack Sorensen slip down the middle of the field. Gus Raglan Bobby committed to this program back on December 13th of 2013. 50% on passes, now a little better than that. A little toss to Kenny Young. That's half a decade ago, Jim. I mean, I was just getting out of the NFL at that time. <laughs> you don't think that Rags is considered a 
the old man on this team, dude. Oh, he's like a grandpa. When you're a fifth-year senior, yeah. he might be 23. You've got guys in here that might be 17 years old rolling off the bus. You can say, I remember the day. <laughs> Second and six, deep into the third quarter we are. Struggle to get the play in here. Plenty of time. No snap to Raglan. Time to throw to the flat. Going to be a first down and then some. Past the 45-yard line, this offense now starting to click as Mayock makes the catch and run. He's that big physical receiver. They've been working him on the edge on those comebacks. He's able to break the tackle and pick up a couple extra yards, which is big for this Miami offense. Right around the 50, watch for a play-action shot at some point. Good for 13. Marshall had its biggest lead early in this quarter, 28-7. Raglan, double, double pump. Yep. Gardner. Put a flag. And that's what happens when you get right there at the 50. Good offensive coaches want to try to take a shot, catch the defense napping. Miami's done that a couple of times. Looks like they're picking up a PI right here. Maybe a defensive hold. Pass interference. Number seven, defense. 15 yards, automatic first down. And now into Marshall territory are the Red Hawks. You saw what they did right there. They were able to put Garner to the field, so he was getting on McLean Sapp. Not the best corner. That would be Chris Jackson, who's always on the boundary. You get that mismatch there. You run the double move. You see the pump fake come in. And James Garner does a good job selling it. And I'm surprised he didn't come down with this catch because it was a very well-thrown ball. So it is now first and 10 inside the Marshall 40. With a buck five remaining in the quarter. Take another shot. There right it is. Over the middle. Got a tight end and 44, Nate Becker. Another Miami first down. And what happens? You start running all this action in the backfield, and you're playing man to man. You see the linebackers. They're chasing. They're chasing shadows, and it's not even a sunny day. <laughs> the tight end's able to slip right down the middle of the field. Raglan in a groove right now, going for six. There's that shot you mentioned, and he had man coverage on the outside. Absolutely, they get to the, between the 25 and 20, they call that the, the, the strike zone right there to see if they can steal a quick one. And they went right back at McLean Sapp. And I like how the officials tonight are letting them play a little bit. They've called some PI, but only stuff that's been obvious. They've called it pretty even both ways. When you think about James Gardner and Tyree Brady, how big and physical they are, they're letting the corners body him a little bit. And as long as it's going the same way both ways, you feel okay with it. Which teams can adjust to from the get-go. Second and 10, 42 seconds remaining in the quarter. They run well on second down. How about this? Inside the five. Maurice Thomas, the local kid. Well, you watched him fake that sweep a bunch of times, and then all of a sudden they just hand it to him, and nobody's ready. Maurice Thomas using that speed. Not a herd defender in sight for about five yards, and he's able to turn that thing up the field, and now they're knocking on the door. And this is what Chuck Martin wants to do. He wants to have a lot of action in the backfield that all looks the same. And we're going to get you the linebackers and safeties communicating, communicating. And when you start to get tired, you make those mistakes. Tight ends down the middle of the field. You start handing off on that play action there was before, and you start to see big gains. Little option for Ragland, and they cut him down after a gain of a yard, maybe two at most, as we are about to end the third quarter. He's taking Gus Ragland back to his Cincinnati Bowler days. Yes. The big quarterback getting downhill with the fake pitch. And that was a heck of a play right there by Juwan Yuli to be able to bring Raglan down because he is not a small guy. End of the quarter, and we got some drama brewing here in Oxford. Miami after trailing 28-7, then down 28-14 and two yards away from making it a one-score game. Red Hawks storming back, trying to cut this to a one-score lead. Marshall trying to say no way. Fourth quarter in a moment. Second and goal for Miami at the two to start the fourth quarter. Trying to cut the lead to seven. For a game that was dominated early by Marshall, time of possession has been cut 
to where it's almost dead even at 22 minutes apiece. Two in the backfield. Second man gets it. Smith held up and gang tackle for nothing. They've been pounding it with Smith earlier. You see him, I think he could have probably held the point a little bit. Tries to bounce it outside. There was nothing out there though. A great read there by Chase Hancock, the former walk-on, the leader of that defense, preseason all-conference. That's why he's received that type of recognition. Now third and goal from the two. Ragland looking and firing out of the end zone, fourth down. You would think Miami goes for it here because a field goal matters little. A field goal does matter little if you think you can't get any stops, but you just watch Miami go out and get a stop on the herd in the last series. They look like they're going for it. That's the play that I would make because they haven't been really able to move the football all that well consistently. I think you probably have to put it in Ragland's hands though right here. Allow him to be the guy that makes the play, either through the run or the pass. Let him be the one that dictates it. He's your fifth year senior. He's the heart and soul of this team. You know he's gonna pour everything he has into this play. Jack Sorensen, number 13, back in the lineup for Miami on fourth and goal. Loaded box for Marshall. Ragland fakes, looks over the middle, incomplete. It's a goal line stand for the thundering herd. That's not all bad. They go to James Gardner. They try to get their big play guy on the slant at the top. He's matched up with the number one corner, Chris Jackson for Marshall. That's the battle you want. You see Ragland hangs in there, surveys it, comes back. He wants his guy, and they're letting him play. They're letting him play. Chris Jackson does a great job cutting off. Gardner in the NFL, you'll probably see that flag thrown nine out of 10 times. But here tonight, they've let it go both sides. I don't have a problem with it. I like what I've seen. And that's not all bad for Miami right here. If they can force a three and out, they'll get the ball back at the 50-yard line or probably better and be able to punch it in. But this is a big, big stop for their defense right here. It would be critical for this. So this is where Marshall, you need two first downs to try to flip the field. Operating from its own two. Green in the end zone off the high snap. No, no surprises there. Marshall's trying to go back to the run, hammer it up in there behind their big offensive line, which has worked pretty well. Keon Davis has had a heck of a day. The guy's doing a great job for him. He's got 54 yards on 10 carries, but this Miami defensive line is starting to look a lot more like the D-line that they experienced last season. Do you risk a pass with a rookie quarterback? I would throw it with Isaiah Green, but I wouldn't let him sit in the pocket. I'd get him on the move, let him roll. That way he can throw it away or potentially use his legs if he needs to. He will throw out of his own end zone. Not enough for the first down, but up to the eight for the completion will leave them with a third and four. That's a good, that's a good safe play for your young quarterback right there. Some quick game to the outside. You know you're gonna give Obi Obiallo a little bit of cushion. These guys beat him down the field. Now you're facing a third and manageable. This is something that you can pick up easily for your quarterback. And you hear the Red Hawk Nation getting excited about this. They know this is a huge third down. If they can get a stop, they'll be able to get the ball back with great field position. And Brad Kenny walked up over the center, looked for him to run a little stunt and a little man action. And as a result, they find a seam in that secondary and get the first down at a 20. Big play. So they tried to cover up every defense, every uh, lineman up there. Brad Kenny walked. They give it back to Keon Davis, though, and they weren't able to make the play. Look at him use his speed, get through the hole right there. How about the block by Levi oh, Brown, 61? Levi Brown, and that's why he's a guy that's on the Remington watch list right there. He's a veteran player. You had two guys, one leader of the offense, one leader of the defense, battling it out. Looks like Marshall and Levi Brown won that round. Marshall now 6 of 10 on third down. That's a solid number. Setting up to win the game. Little screen pass, little flare actually to the outside. And a pickup of four, but more importantly with that third down pickup, more clock being utilized by Marshall with a two score lead. More clocks being utilized. That's a great play by Tyler, by Tyler King. You throw it to him, it's probably no game. There's two or three Red Hawk defenders encompassing him. He's able to take that and it doesn't look like much, but now you're sitting at second and six. He was able to pick up four yards on something that probably should have been a nothing play. 
Marshall picked second as we highlighted at halftime in CSU A East. But a good chance to win that division in Conference USA and play for a championship. Florida Atlantic today going to Oklahoma. Great payday, but that spanked 63 14. They did, they did. And that was a great play right there, and lastly by Pascal Calagno. And he was able to come through defensive end and hold on, hold on for dear life on Tyler King. And to force the third down, if not, he was picking up another 10 yards. We saw number two, Josh Allen, in your picture. Can his defense come up and make a big stop? Marshall's been good on third down. Play clock 10. No safeties deep. They're playing man and maybe bringing some pressure as well. No snap to Green. And not enough. Miami to get the ball back. That's a great job snuffing that out. And who's right there? Koenig. Sen senior Brad Koenig. The guy knew what to do. He knew they tried to run something like that. He watched the film. They've been preparing this game all offseason. Don't think that these Red Hawks didn't feel like they let one slip away last year. They've been all over this. They've watched the film. They got prepared. Big play right there by Koenig. And now they're going to have pretty decent field position. Marshall able to dig out from its own two to the 28. Now punting to Kenny Young back at the Miami 30. Runs up 33. And Young brought down after a return of five. So with 10 minutes and nine seconds remaining, still a two touchdown deficit for the Red Hawks. 61 yards to go for Miami to find the end zone. <laughs> Welcome back, Bobby. What do you think, future coach here, man? <laughs> he looks fired up. I mean, my guys would be knocked out. It's way past their bedtime at this point. But I mean, that Red Hawk fan looks fired up right there. Be a chance to be on Chuck Martin's staff here in a few years. And they're surprised. It's surprisingly good spirits for the fact that, I mean, most people thought this game would be over three hours ago. Long day. Play fake for Raglan. Throwing. He's got a man. It's Sorensen. Another big play for Jack. Inside the 30. And they'll spot him at the 28-yard line. Three huge catches for Jack Sorensen in this game, one of which was a touchdown. You see him running the corner route right there from the number two position in the slot. And Gus Ragland struggled a little bit to start the second half, but has really found his rhythm here since midway through the third quarter. Been very accurate from that point on. Good for 33. Maurice Thomas, a motion, Ragland over the middle. First and goal for Miami as the offense comes back quickly. And this time on the catch, Andrew Homer out of Cincinnati. I'll tell you, it's stealing. They run the double play action there, the jet sweep, also the fake to Kenny Young across the middle and slip the tight end right down through the linebackers. Those guys don't know what to do at that point. Raglan over the middle, touchdown. What a drive. Well, and if I'm not mistaken, that's the exact same play they ran to Smith last year for a touchdown that we showed in the previous highlight from last season. They fake the pitch, the linebackers are flowing, you see the tight end right down the middle of the field. Raglan throws a strike to Andrew Homer. Well, Raglan has been money in the fourth quarter of games, particularly in the red zone overall. 25 touchdown passes prior to tonight and just one interception. Well, if you think about it before, they would fake that pitch and Raglan would keep it and run. So it's the threat of his legs that also keep those linebackers honest. 9.20 left. After Miami was stuffed at the goal line moments ago, this a 49-second drive that covers 61 yards in three, just three pass plays. Couple of red shirt sophomores, Jack Sorensen and this man, Andrew Homer. Both looming big in this game for Cincinnati as Gus Raglan now is in a groove. Throwing a couple of touchdown passes and it's a one score game with 9.20 left. Last year kickoff returns, Miami was destroyed by it. As Bobby mentioned earlier, not tonight. Haven't been able to return at all as all have been kickbacks or kickoffs, excuse me, <laughs> that have reached the end zone. And that's big. That's a huge weapon if you're a school like Miami, so you don't have to face these elite athletes of Marshall in open space. This one could be returned, though. 
Let's see how Cincinnati or Miami handles it. King bounces off one. 30 still going. Good return for Ty King. And so instead of starting for the 25, Miami unable to make a stop and pretty good field position for Marshall. Well, I said it only takes one miss hit by the kicker, and that's what you saw right there. He, Ty King almost has a chance to bounce outside. Number 78, the kicker flying up trying to make that play right there, or 79. Samuel Sloman, because you know what? He knew that he missed on that. Yeah. He wanted to make sure that he got him down before he got to the sideline. The he only, got an earful from Chuck Martin. The only time he's missed all night for Miami. First and 10, Marshall 32. This Marshall offense has been hot and cold. It's either 75 yard drives or maybe 15 yard plays and, or 15 yards and off the field. Green in trouble, sack back at the 25. First time tonight brought down. Yes, who? Mr. Brad Kennick cannot stop this guy. Coming through there, you see him shedding the block by Keon Davis and tracking down Isaiah Green, who Isaiah Green can run well. But those are the plays you expect your fifth year senior, the leader of your defense to make. Oh, she yeah. looks sad. Mom and dad, we were up 28-7. Oh. <laughs> and I was supposed to be home three hours ago. Yes, now second and very long. 17. Let's see if Isaiah Green could pull Marshall out of the hole. Miami rushing four. Green outside Brady. And a catch made. That's a remarkable catch by Tyree Brady. And they are letting these guys play on the outside. DeAndre Daniels had a fistful of jersey. He it's did. a well-thrown ball by Isaiah Green. I mean, this is this looks like 1990s football. Look at that. He's pulling on the inside of that arm. Brady makes the great catch, but they're letting him go both ways. They did the same thing to James Gardner on the slant, so I, I like this. This is the football that I enjoy watching. Need to pick up seven. Not going to happen. Miami is going to get the ball back. And that's what happens when you have a young quarterback. You're able to put him in third and seven and eight in critical situations. You have Brad Kenny. The Mike linebacker walked up there over the A-gap, staring him down, doesn't know whether he's coming, whether he's going to drop, and then you see the miscommunication on the outside. It's better than an interception, but this Marshall defense, which has been on the field a lot over the last 15 minutes, is going to have to come back out and try to get another stop in a situation where Miami is looking to probably have pretty decent field position. Robert Lefevre to punt. Kenny Young to return. Fair catch. Seven and a half remains. Miami with a football and a chance to tie. Twenty-eight twenty-one our score. Bobby Carpenter, Jim Barber setting up perhaps for a dramatic finish. Gus Ragland started the second half 0 for 5. Since then, he's been magic. Let's see how Marshall and their new coordinator, Adam Fuller, tried to defend these receivers this time around. Well, it's not necessarily defending the receivers, it's defending the plays. As you see the jet sweep, the play action coming back, they're trying to bring some pressure now to hopefully disrupt it in the backfield. But if you don't miss, if you miss and you bring the heat, then you could be getting gashed for 10, 15 yards. Gain of four by Kenny Young. It's tough to bring pressure when you're seeing that much play action. You think if you can get there, you can disrupt the mesh point, disrupt some of the timing. But if you miss and your guys guess wrong, then you're a man down trying to play the run. So it's, it's really a no-win situation for this Marshall defense. Last night, Western Michigan nearly a comeback win of the ages against Syracuse before losing at the Carrier Dome. Miami once down by three scores. Now, we now see within a, seven. See a little miscommunication there between Gus Ragland and James Gardner. Thought Gardner was going to try to take him deep, throw the back shoulder, and says he instead he decides to turn and hook up. So now we're facing the third and six. That back shoulder throw really hard to defend. Well, it's tough to defend when you're going against the guy who's 6'2", 6'5", oh, yes. and he's 225 pounds. Guys like Tyree Brady and James Gardner. I could throw back shoulder face to them. <laughs> Marshall fans are standing, hoping for a defensive stop. That's the play defensively for Marshall. 
Miami needs five. They need five, but if they have to punt here, it's not the worst thing in the world. No snap, Raglan. Caught! MPI. And James that, Gardner, also likely a pass interference call. And that's the back shoulder fade that I was telling you I could throw if James Gardner's going to make that play for me with the PI. Pass interference, number 81, oh. offense. But it's against Gardner. Well, you saw down. some of the thundering her coaching staff jumping up and down, and there might have been a reason for that. So instead of a first down catch, let's see what happens here. Okay. I I didn't see the push by Gardner. Was I there do. one before them? No. He's going against Kieran Morrell right there. And I, I have a problem with that call because they've let they've let him play all night. So why now, right? So why decide to throw the, the flag offensively? The DBs have been holding the receivers. James Gardner's been held. Tyree Brady's been held. And then all of a sudden you choose to call offensive PI in a critical situation yeah. on something that to me wasn't it wasn't even obvious, let alone blatantly obvious. So I have an issue with that. That to me is some inconsistencies there in a critical moment. Now Miami's got to pick up 20 on third down. Just don't make a mistake if you're Gus Raglan. Good, good call. So with a give up play, they gain maybe a yard or two. And they're going to rely on the defense and three timeouts to get the ball back. They punted the ball pretty well tonight. You try to flip the field. And you're going to look across the field at you, and you're going to say, Isaiah Green, he struggled a little bit. They've had some issues the last couple drives. And we're going to try to force him to win it. Yep. You have plenty of time. There's six minutes left on the clock, and that's what sometimes quarterbacks panic and think they have to try to get it all done this drive. You're going to get another shot, but you have to make sure that you get that other shot by getting the ball to be punted away and not an interception. Tyler King from around the 40. Look out. Here he goes. Man the beat. King still with the ball. Down in a 10-yard line. What a play by Tyler King. So you can kick it in the end zone on kickoffs, but when you punt it, you don't want to hang it down the middle of the field to a guy like Tyler King. Catching it between the hashes, pretty good blocking there. No flags, no blocking the backs or holds that I see. They're a great job. I'll tell you this, the guys, his uh, teammates are going to be giving him some crap, though, when he heads to the locker room tonight. The guy that slows him up is the, is the punter at yeah. the end of that play. But he gets downhill in a hurry, a 44-yard punt and a 50-yard return. Chuck Martin knew that, he probably just would have went for it on fourth and 19. Oh, yes. This could be the game winner for Marshall. As long as they don't turn it over, they have to come away with three. Yes, I would think right now you get conservative here and oh. make it a two-score game with a field goal. If I'm Tim Cramsey, I am not throwing the football. And this is no offense to Isaiah Green, but I'm not letting a redshirt freshman have an opportunity to make a mistake. Keon Davis to the outside. Penalty flag on the play. He reaches the end zone. Well, let's see what the flag is all about. Looks like Jordan Dowry, the left guard. They're going to get him with a hold. So that's going to push it back 10. No touchdown. I, I'm Take with Take six off the board. Holding, number 58, offense. 10-yard penalty. Make first down. I'm with you, Jordan. I mean, he's saying it's not me. It's all right, buddy. We're going to get you. And you can see him kind of pulling away right there. All you got to do is let go. He's not going to. There's no defensive tackle that's going to chase down Keon Davis. Let him go, and that's offensive lineman they hold sometimes just a bit too long. If you let him go a second before, you're not going to throw the flag. But the one thing you cannot do at this point is have a negative yardage play. You're sitting at about a 46-yard field goal now. If for some reason you gave up a sack, then you'd be in a situation where you might be concerned. With man coverage to the end zone, penalty flag on the play. Brady, touchdown! And that is a great play by Tyree Brady. I think you're going to get defensive pass interference on this, but it doesn't matter because Brady came down with the ball. What a catch by Kid Destin play on Sundays, Monday nights, and Thursdays. And what a call for Marshall. So much for being conservative, looking for three. They'll take six. You know, I'm surprised they threw the flag right there. That's looked like every other every other uh, contested reception tonight. I'm kind of disappointed in the officials on the last two plays. I wish they would have kept the flags in their pockets on both of them, even though Brady comes up with the catch and it's an unbelievable play. They've done a great job tonight letting the guys play. Just let them finish up the game. 
think about the punt return of 50 yards by Tyler King. As we take a look at Tyree Brady once again, we highlight him at the beginning, and he is probably better than advertised. Oh, he's done a great job. You see him catching the slip screen, getting upfield, using some of that physical prowess that he has to get inside, make some guys miss, pull some ball carriers. Then you see him here, a little quick kick by Isaiah Green, playing some special teams gunner, keeping that ball out of the end zone, helping to pin Miami back. And then obviously the plays that you've seen all, all across the field, going downtown, being able to fight off a pass interference penalty, doing a great job coming down with the football, getting one foot in. Unbelievable play by Tyree Brady, and that is why, folks, he will be playing on Sundays. And I think eventually Green may be playing on Sundays, too, because he throws a gorgeous ball. He does throw a very pretty ball. He runs well. The guy seems very poised for a freshman, and that's very impressive. They said he had the it factor. It factor. Tim Cramsey was very, very high on his ability to hang in the pocket. He's more than just a scrambler, and you've watched that today. He's very comfortable, and I don't mind you throwing a single route one look read for your young quarterback there get to a guy like Tyree Brady in that situation. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna throw it, make it easy. Absolutely. That has sent some Miami fans to their cars. Still time left, but now a two touchdown deficit and five and a half to go. All three timeouts remain. So the 46 second scoring drive, Miami got one up. This drive, aided by the 54 yard punt return, Last of the play on offense, 11 yards, 12 seconds. So now you're going to be two-minute mode for Gus Raglan in this Miami offense. They're going to be in an up-tempo, hurry-up situation. Probably not running the football except for critical situations when it's a short and they need to convert it. So if you're Marshall, you're going to play zone here and give them some yardage? Uh, it looks to me like they're playing some version of too deep with man underneath. Now they're bailing out here late, and they probably will play zone. That would be the smart play. Well, I'll, I'll give him another touchdown no. as long as it takes five minutes to get. Raglan in trouble, out of trouble, now throwing off the right foot. Isaiah Green's college football debut, 24 of 37 as quarterback, who got the starting assignment from Marshall at the last moment. 272 yards, two touchdowns, seven rushes for 41. And the biggest stat is the one that you didn't mention, Jim. The fact that he hasn't thrown an interception tonight. Exactly. He hasn't put the ball on the ground as a, in the form of a fumble either. No, I, was gonna, I was gonna get to that, but <laughs> that's the thing you worry about as a head coach. Not the fact you think this guy's electric and can make plays. It's the fact that you're worried, hey, he may he may give you two touchdowns, but he could cost you three. Okay. A little short dink pass. It still results in a gain of nine, but the clock continues to move. We're getting down to five minutes remaining in this football game of week one. The clock is the enemy, though, now for Miami. You've got to find a way to get out of bounds or get first downs on each and every throw because you're going to need as much time as you can get on this second possession because you can't use your timeouts. You're going to have to use them to stop the clock when you're up on defense. So third down, run the ball, pick up the first down. They're spotting it quick. They're setting it. You've got to be at the line ready to go. Miami gets the first down, and Raglan is not at the line right now. So this is taking a long time, isn't it? Well, it looks like they're having communication issues coming in. When I see Raglan spinning his hands, that means to me, give me the call. You got to get out of bounds. That's a mistake right there. Yep. That's something that you cannot make. If By the way, uh, kudos to a couple of defensive players in this game. Ten tackles in the secondary. And Chase Hancock from the linebacker position has got 10 as well. Oh, it's been a pleasure to watch Brad Kennig and Chase Hancock play. Two guys, you know, they play the weak inside position for their team. Leaders, guys who are fifth-year seniors that have grinded through the program, understand what it means to play there. They've been through some ups, they've been through some downs. Those guys are going to fight to the very bitter end. Miami on the move, though, with four minutes to go. Four-man rush. Contact to the 20. Penalty coming up on Chris Jackson. See, now we're starting to see the, the, the penalties that are abundant. And those it's, that's the same type of coverage that we were seeing in the third quarter. So do you think because the game is tightened up? Pass interference, number 15, defense. 15 yards, automatic first down. 
Therefore, now the game is starting to tighten up in terms of the officiating. And that's how it looks to me. And this, and this isn't me. It's one side. It's both ways. I'm disappointed in how they've called the offensive pi on James Garner. They called the the defensive pass interference on Tyree Brady's complete uh, completion was ultimately a touchdown. And then even right there, when they're working Luke Mayock, like they were letting those guys play for three quarters, and now all of a sudden in the fourth, you decide to start calling penalties. Team has to adjust as Ragland looks with man coverage outside. Nice catch. Ball is caught. James Gardner to the three yard line, first and goal. That is a heck of a play right there by James Gardner. A nice ball, a little bit far outside for Gus Ragland, but when you have a guy with his length and James Gardner, he can come down and make it for you. So Miami now on the move and quickly, first and goal, and I think this play is going to be under review. The ruling on the field is a completed pass. The play is under further review. Let's take a look at this. Catches, foots down, unless it bobbles late, that's a completion, sir. Can't tell from this angle whether he had possession he or not. He keeps it. It looks like it rolls through. I don't see any rocking between his legs when he hits the ground. I mean, we've had a real treat to watch two fantastic receivers tonight, with James Gardner and Tyree Brady. And that ball stays firm against his body. Looks like a catch. He might have had two feet down when, it's, when you look at it. Harold Dynas is the replay official. And he will either confirm the play or overrule it. The replays we show you are the same replays that the officials up in the booth have. We also have a medical observer that represents both teams in case there are health issues with any of the players that have been undocumented on the field. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It's a catch, first down. I think some of those folks that headed to the stands might want to reverse field. Absolutely. These guys, when you have receivers like this, you're never out of the game. If Miami can score here in the next probably 30 seconds and they can get a three and out, they have a very realistic chance of putting two more touch, putting another touchdown on the board. You think about the goal line stand that Marshall had in this game that cost Miami seven, which is who Luma is the difference in this game. Raglan on first and goal, releases, touchdown! Kenny Young. It's a great job right there, great call by Chuck Martin. Martin, you know Marshall's gonna be playing man down here on the goal line. You have your back in the backfield, who's gonna be guarded by a linebacker, and you slip him to the flat. And you see him right there, Chuck Martin, trying to figure out, do the calculations, calculations in his head, the former accountant. You know he's on this. How much time it's going to take? We see Kenny Young slide out here. They had two receivers outside. They run in breaking routes, and there's a slew of herd defenders all piled up. Because when you run guys in like that, and man, there's always going to be a big pile. Sam Sloman, now four of four, on a drive that lasted less than two minutes. Seven plays, 75 yards. So here's the situation: three and a half left. Three timeouts on both sides. That matters most to Miami right now as you take a look at the touchdown throw and the fine catch by Young. Unlike the NFL, there is no two-minute timeout or two-minute warning. Only bring that up because of a lot of fans watch both college and the pros. Miami wouldn't mind an extra timeout, but still has three in the bank. Still have three in the bank. And here's what you want to do. You want to try to put Marshall in a situation where they're facing a third and eight, third and seven. And they have to decide, are we just going to run it and concede the force you burn the last climb of timeout? Or do they try to get it? And in the midst of doing that, throwing in completion. And then, uh, then you'll be able to take that next time out with you. But if Marshall gets a three and out here and uses all three timeouts, they should be able to get the ball back with more than three minutes to go. Yeah. And if you're Marshall on offense, are you going to start to float green on that pocket and maybe allow his athleticism to pick up a big gain for you? You do, but you always. You have to tell him, whatever you do, don't throw the football. Don't throw an incompletion unless you th don't just throw it away. Take the sack as long as it's not a 20-yard loss because time is our friend right now. Force them to use up their timeouts. Ty King had that 50-yard punt return that set up Marshall's fifth score. He is back deep along with Keon Davis. Neither have had just one, actually, kickoff return the entire game. They're going to have a chance at a second. No. Into the end zone. Oh no. Oh my gosh. Oh my. Oh my. Oh he fought. 
They're going to get the ball. They're going to down at the two-yard line. Well, they may be spotting it. They may review this because you can't. That would have been a fumble, which you could have advanced. I was thinking it was a muff. But, oh, my goodness. This, this is why you force teams to play the whole game. Now, the ruling on the field is the runner's forward progress was stopped in the field of play. First down, Marshall. Wow, that's huge. And that's a surprise. And Keon Davis, I can only imagine what's going through his mind as Tyler King was trying to run by him. Probably, Probably wanted to tackle him in the end zone. Let me tackle you in the end zone, buddy. Wow. Oh, goodness. Oh, Doc Holliday, he, you wonder why coaches don't have any hair or go gray really fast or all have heart problems. It's because of watching plays like that. A guy that's played great for you all night and Tyler King, and then he goes and makes a play like that. Marshall still has a seven point lead, but now suddenly the herd are in trouble. Oh, goodness. This is a situation you don't want your redshirt freshman quarterback to be in. And that's exactly what Isaiah Green is in. They'll run the ball on first down. Keon Davis, nothing there. Tyler King making a huge mistake in this game. Will it cost Marshall as Miami uses the first of its three timeouts? So now if you're Marshall, you're facing a second and 10. Probably going to run the football again. And then you're looking at a third and 10. Why not throw it on second down? The one time that you would throw the ball here, I like it if you're just going to stand up and throw it to the boundary. Right. Stand up and have a quick pass, a hitch, something like that. Even if you just pick three or four yards up, it'll give you a little breathing room. And it's something that typically teams are in more of a run defense on second down. You go to third, they're going to be prepared to play pass, and it doesn't matter. We'll give you seven or eight yards. If it's third and ten, we're still forcing you to punt. This would be a great opportunity right here. But then again, you're hoping that your redshirt freshman quarterback makes the right read. This is an experienced and veteran Miami secondary. They can pretend like they're bailing out of there and then sit and, for, and make you pay. See what kind of faith the new offensive coordinator, Tim Cramsey, has in his young quarterback. You got Cody Mitchell in a tight end. It looks like they are hanging here. They might try to throw this ball. We'll set a man in motion. Davis will run and didn't get the first down, but did pick up some sizable yardage to the eight. We'll leave them now with a third and four. Miami uses the second of its three timeouts. That'll set up a big third down play for both teams. So I like what they did right there. They brought Obi Oyalo in motion to help try to distract the linebacker, something that Miami's done a ton of. Then they give it to Davis, let him get downhill. And now you're in a third and manageable situation. It's not third and nine where your quarterback's standing in the end zone. Now it's a situation where, hey, we could run it, conceivably pick this up. And now you're, you're forcing this Miami Red Hawk defense to defend both uh, the running game with the running back, your quarterback run with Isaiah Green, maybe some play action, getting him out of the pocket. There's a lot of things you can do right here. But you know what? Hey, even if we don't get it, we don't have to throw the ball. But we have a lot of options available to us to force Miami to use their last timeout. Yes. Should we not pick this up? Need to get four with 314 left. Playing man across the board. Once again, sending a man in motion. He stopped it. Not going to be enough. Miami uses its final timeout. The big question is they have three minutes. I don't mind. I know you don't you want to try to get in the end zone. I don't want to get in the end zone with too much time left on the clock. To give Green a chance to win it at the end, right? They're probably going to get the ball at the 45-yard line, maybe the 40 and have between you know, 55 and 60 yards. Now, they don't have any timeouts, but in college football, with the way the clock stops on first down, that's an eternity. Kind of a shame you have to think like that. All you want to do is get a tying score and not even have to worry about what your defense does. Well, because your defense then all of a sudden is changing from, hey, so stop the run, don't give them a first down, to playing two-minute defense. Gus Raglan has a perfect record. We're not throwing a pick. 9-0. We'll see if he can take that to 10-0 tonight. I do like what Doc Holliday did there with Tim Cramsey. Just, just run the ball. Your defense has played pretty well for the most part. They just got you a big stop on the previous, on two drives ago when they needed it. Let them play again. Don't put yourself in an adverse situation. Robert Lefevre from the goal line. High end over end, fair catch being called back at the 42 by Kenny Young. 
Gus Raglan, first half, 10 of 18 for 126, and a score 14 of 24, second half, 226, two touchdowns. We've got him working James Gardner, working some of the play action, throwing those in routes to him. Running that play action, he looks really fluid when he's doing that. Put some nice, nice balls on the money to the perimeter. And then you see some of the big plays from Jack Sorensen. Over the middle. And a nice one there for a score on the edge to Mr. Kenny Young. Four receivers set for Miami. Ragland steps up. Going to throw off the back foot. Could have run that one, too, I think. That's amazing. Gus Ragland, he knows not to take a sack. He escapes and eludes pressure. I think he could have ran that and picked up 15 yards. And that's the thing you have to worry about. When you bring pressure and you play man against the running quarterback, it's something that Miami's faced today, is if he breaks that pressure, there's nobody that has their eyes back to him that can come up and make a tackle. Now this is four down territory with Miami out of timeouts. So we're to second down, 2.56 left. Opening game between Conference USA and the MAC. As good as last year, which came down to the final minutes. Gus Raglan in trouble. And broken up at the line of scrimmage. You might call a holding on this. It looked like number 46, Andrew Homer, was in the vicinity over there. There is no foul for intentional grounding. There were uh, as a receiver. Yeah, however, holding 54 offense, 10 yard penalty, second down. So the idea here is to pin him 10 yards back rather than take the incompleted pass. Oh yeah, push him further out. Push him further out than just give him a third and 10 because you want more yards, you can tackle him in the field of play. It's gonna burn off more time. I'm trying to move this team further away from the end zone. Only time I would decline it as if it was a third going to a fourth down, I'm gonna give you one shot and try to stop you. Instead of a second to a third, which is the case here. Yes. Miami 67 yards now away from getting a chance to tie the game. Young in the backfield with Raglan with a four receiver option. Incomplete, Chris Jackson back defending and midfield. It's great awareness there by Chase Hancock. They put Garner in the slot. They have a defensive back over the top with a veteran linebacker sinking underneath Garner to force that high throw by Raglan. Now we're facing a third and 20. And this is a situation, forget the clock. You've got to try to pick up 10 to 12 yards so you can get in a fourth and manageable to convert this thing. Miami just five of 14, Bobby, on third down. They've done a pretty good job picking up fours. I would have, wouldn't have minded seeing a draw or a screen or something to try to get some more a more positive yardage play on second down. Third and 20. They'll try to get some of it back. Clock stops. This stop will be at the 37. Not much of a gain on the play. Now it sets up fourth and long and possibly Miami's last chance. Well, this is definitely their last chance unless Marshall squanders it away. But they picked up five yards. That would have been the play that you should have ran on second down. Swing it out, get you to that third and 15, then hack off another seven or eight to give you something manageable. This is a bad situation, fourth and 15 here. There's not a whole lot of plays in the playbook for this, Jim. Let's see what Marshall rushes Bobby at this point. Four on the line of scrimmage. Now a five receiver set. They'll rush for drop seven. Raglan broken up line of scrimmage. Over on downs to Marshall. One of the things you notice there is the relentless pass rush of Marshall. They weren't bringing pressure really after that after first down. They were able to get pressure with their four down guys. You know what? I like the call because a lot of times you drop people back and there's space in the middle to throw a pass. Absolutely. They showed, they mugged up there, they confused the offensive line a little bit. The offensive line had to play a little more passive than probably what they wanted until they could determine who was coming. And by that point, they collapsed the pocket on Gus Ragland, and that was a big key, collapsing the pocket, not letting him escape to the outside or crease, crease through there where you get him in a scramble situation. 94, Channing Ames has had a solid game tonight, putting some pressure on Gus Ragland at the moment that the herd needed it the most. One first down and it's over. Don't look for anything creative of Marshall here. If they do anything but run the ball, and that's what Doc, we're probably bringing him over to talk about it. 
two hands on the football. Well, and you know, a lot of ways, Tyler King's got to be feeling so much better right now oh. because of his decision to run out of an end zone on a kick and then be down to the two, and suddenly Miami has new life, and now Marshall's 222 away from saving the game for him and starting the season 1-0. Hey, if I'm Tyler King, I'm finding my defensive guys, and I'm taking care of them after the game <laughs> somehow. They bailed him out big time, because if not, oh, he's going to get yelled at in films. But I'd much rather they get yelled at in the win You can take get yelled it, at in the loss. Oh, yeah. When you, people ain't look at it, if you can handle a physical mistake, a dropped pass, this or that, but when you make a choice, a selfish choice to bring it out like that, oh, goodness, the coaches are going to be all over you. No timeouts remaining for Miami. Keon Davis. Red Hawks will try to strip. Clock gets reset to 40. And Marshall will use every second. Last year, the final was 31 26. And unless something very unlikely happens, 35 28, again, a one score finish will be the end to this one. And Marshall will make it 10 of 11 wins over the last decade plus against Miami. Well, last year, Miami outplayed Marshall outside of the kickoff returns and interception returns for touchdowns. Today, it was back and forth. Marshall was able to move the ball at times, get stops at times. There were times where Miami moved the ball really well and got stops really well. The difference was the King punt return where he took it all the way down to the five yard line and then almost gave it back on the other end. Yep. But that was, that was the difference in this game that set up that go ahead score. You can smile now, young lady. Now she's tired. It's been a long day for everybody. The fans, the players, the production crew, all the Warriors out here today. All the herd faithful are still here locked in. They're ready for a night in Oxford after this. Yes. Marshall should use a timeout here. Run it all the way down, call the timeout. So depending on when the reset comes, this likely is the last play of the game, particularly if quarterback decides to run a few seconds here. If the quarterback runs around for five seconds. That'll do it. Then just knees it out, it'll be done. And that's something you have to work on in practice. Hey, we're going to get you back there in the gun, run back there around, get two hands on the ball, dive on the side, dive on the side when the defender gets close. game plus the rain delays it took roughly six hours I'm about to put a cap on this Let's see how Marshall's practice their end of clocks end of game situations make sure they have formulated a solid plan everybody knows exactly what to do no uncertainty good snap quarterback get, keep get down that should do it Get down. <laughs> Why are you taking a hit, Isaiah? Get to the ground, son. Like, don't let that guy come in with a tomahawk and chuck that ball out. You slide it out, man. So Marshall begins the 2018 season with a win on the road. And Miami drops its opener on homecoming, the final. Decided by seven points. What are our takeaways today? Takeaways that both of these teams, I think, have elite receivers. They both, I think, realize what type of quarterback they have. Miami knew they had Gus Ragland. I believe Marshall found out a lot about Isaiah Green. And both of these teams are able to play and make big plays at times. But each one of them, if you look at it, there were times where their offense sputtered mightily. And it took Miami a little bit of a time to get into a rhythm. And Chuck Martin's going to have to figure out how to get, have a faster start against the Bearcats team that's been giving the UCLA Bruins all they could handle tonight. So for analyst Bobby Carpenter, I'm Jim Barber. That's it from Jaeger Stadium in Oxford, Ohio. The second year in a row, Marshall gets the lead early and hangs on. Final score tonight, 35-28. Thundering herd, all games airing in the ESPN networks. Are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app.
This has been a presentation of ESPN.